Hey everybody, it's Omic Dragoon 91 here with Canopy Gaming, and today is going to be a uh, session one of our new podcast, and it is called the yeah. Thunder Force Podcast. That's P O D dash K. Uh, A-S-T. So, um, we're going to go around the room here. This will be session one here. We've actually played about 35, 36 sessions at this point here, just so everybody knows. Um, so we'll go ahead and get you guys caught up as we go. Um, things will be uh, new in this world, and uh, we'll explain things uh, a little bit here as we go as the story unfolds. So, uh, Going around the room here, we have uh, Miss Connie, uh, who plays Calypso. Cheers. Uh, we have Mr. MT, who plays MT. I forgot your character. Hello. Name, actually, what was your Holly, right? Um, no, <laughs> Karna. 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 Let me write that down. Uh, we have Graham Cracker Gamer, uh, who plays Skid Mock. Hello. And we have Mr. JD, who plays Minnow. Yes, the horniest of Minotaurs. Yes, yes. Uh, and we also have uh, Miss Violet, uh, who plays uh, Astrid. Uh, um, Windsong. Windsong. There we go. I always forget the last name. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Everybody in the party here, as of uh, just to explain some some quick background here, um, the party essentially was um, just got themselves out of a dungeon and uh, ran into a death tyrant. Essentially, after killing a uh, necromancer, uh, they were essentially one of the characters, Skidmark, uh, was essentially killed. Uh, by the Death Tyrant that they went up against. And um, uh, our Minotaur, JD, or a Minnow in the game, uh, made a wish, uh, cast the, the spell Wish. And he wished for the big bad of the game to be put into a cube. Um, in fact, here, I'm going to actually go, to go ahead and play the clip for everybody uh, so everybody understands what that wish is. Do you remember that I had a magic candy the other week mm -hmm. which gave me the ability <laughs> to cast a spell of my choice uh, mm -hmm. once a day and that spell oh, yeah. I chose wish yes sir so I would like for my action to utter the words I wish that Neric Falkreath the boss of Harman Karth, to be stripped of all his wealth, transferring it to me. Meanwhile, to a victim from my property, Narek himself, and all his subordinates, all his subordinates, are to be bound in an impenetrable cage, which permanently affects them with a silent spell and an impenetrable magical darkness in such a way that they can only be freed by a wish spell. This cage being located in the randomest corner of the astral plane. Thank you. Holy fuck. So that was the clip of JD making his wish. Uh, if you guys are joined in on the stream here, we're streaming on um, on Twitch here, soon to be on YouTube as well here, uh, for those listening in the podcast. Um, everything is going to be in Theater of the Mind, and we will we'll try to describe things uh, as they happen. So, <clears throat> so yes, uh, as that wish happened, there was a giant boom that uh, went off, and it was actually quite deafening and just went off, boom, 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 boom. Uh, at which point, um, Minnow uh, explained a little bit more about... Um, his um, personal well-being. He was actually quite exhausted, uh, and the party decided to all go to sleep immediately, actually. Um, and nobody giving actually a second thought to their dead party member, uh, Skidmok, uh, who was actually still laying dead on the ground. Uh, now, there is one thing that we will need to um, kind of retcon from our last session, uh, as we discussed here, and you guys can find that uh, podcast here. We'll go ahead and publish uh, those past episodes so you can see those at uh, um, the archived um, episodes uh, and get up uh, get up to this point here as well. But this will be a good uh, uh, beginning point here for you guys. So, um, one thing when that wish happened is not only did that death tyrant disappear, as well as all the other uh, you know, bodies and such. But Astrid also disappeared as well. 
Astrid was a uh, an employee. As Violet, Violet is Astrid. So yes. Yeah, so the character in your Graham, have you been in any of these sessions? <laughs> There's, there's, there's precisely the like 35, time. there's like 35, 36 episodes here and you hop in and be like, what's D&D? Who is this character? You've, you've, you've had an adventure since game one with this other character. No, where'd Astrid. she go? Oh, Astrid found out that she has family that needs her. We'll get to that. She disappears when said wish happens. Yeah, but... The wish was for... Oh, crap. Associates of... So as you guys wake up in a a cold sweat, uh, you guys kind of look at each other, uh, all still very sweaty and very, very moist with a hard T. You guys see out out one of the windows of Hamankos' tent. uh, Actually, it's kind of your guys' tent now, I guess. Um, You guys see out the, the window Skidmark sitting down on the dirt but he's upright I like the dirt uh, what, what is he doing just just sitting there I am uh, feeling myself to figure out if I you know I'm like for the DM am I coherent of that dude that I was talking to everything that Do I happened, have any memory of it everything that happened in your quote unquote death you remember everything including talking to the man about needing the souls Everything. All right. So to make sure I'm alive for one thing, the last time I checked, I was obliterated. Um, and then I check my butt to make sure there's no souls in there because that'd be weird. As so, we all do when we wake up. Yeah, that's the first thing I do is give myself a good old fashioned rim job just to make sure there's no dust bunnies. <laughs> I'm using, I'm prying in there with my fingers. It's, uh, but I got claws too. So I'm just kind of like, kind of going, uh, uh, okay, no souls in there. Uh, from, f- as you guys are seeing this in the tent, you guys see Skidmark doing this. He's kind of kilted over, kind of giving himself a good old ring-a-ding. And it looks like he's looks like he's trying to like pass like a really hard BM bowel movement. I thought it was bad manners. Yeah. Well, he's trying I, to pass I would his say bad fin- manners through his butt. Hole. I would say manners, that would be I mean. bad manners. Finger in yeah. your butt. Yeah. Well, and it's such an open story. space. Like, if you're going to do that, do that in private. So, yeah, let me ask here while we wait for Graham to get back here. What's going through everyone's minds right now? I didn't have what that dream, right? What going on? Uh, no, MT, you went to, well, you weren't in the last session. You but we'll, we'll say, we'll say, Yeah, pardon me, uh, Karna, sorry. Uh, Karna, for all intents and purposes, wasn't necessarily in the last session, but we'll say for retcon-wise that you you were, you were just really quiet, nobody noticed you. Um, because you're so tall, small, and you're so cute and furry, I just want to squeeze you and love you. Um, I'm gonna put you in my pocket. Oh, Raid your um, hair! <laughs> <laughs> the other party members start making animal handling checks on you, like, stop it! That's yeah. not cool! Quit it out! I don't want to wear that! No! Um, leashes look good on you. Um, Minnow, um, I'm, just, I'm having fun. Um, we'll say that everyone went to sleep. You went to sleep. You got some really, like, crazy good sleep, uh, as you were, you know, snuggled in a, in a corner pile, uh, that maybe this thing that happened to everybody else allegedly didn't happen to you because they didn't see you. But you got some, like, wicked crazy good sleep. Fair enough, MT? Yeah. I wish I could get some crazy good sleep. Well, all you gotta One do is tell, all you gotta tell... You know, tell Graham is you know, hey, I got a headache, and then just roll over, and you'll be fine. <laughs> I wish. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Minnow, what's going through your mind at the moment? <laughs> um, what's going through my mind? I'm trying to remember what happened in my session. Um, I'm thinking about the uh, implications of my decisions and how I'm going to go about killing. Killing who? Uh, that's for me to know. You. Okay. To find out eventually yes i have to acquire something and so i've got to figure out how from from a role play perspective we'll say mt that you woke up on a on a beach uh with pink skies um and you kind of played out a a fun little um uh gulliver gulliver's travels uh type of thing with little wood uh wood people on a beach that had you tied down and you were, you know, so small that they didn't—they weren't so afraid of you as a as a tall giant. They just thought you were really super helpful, and you were welcomed into their 
into their their uh, into their world, into their community, as one of their own. One of them. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, fine. But otherwise, you woke up incredibly well rested. So everybody, if you I... haven't already, uh, go ahead and reset your guys' spell slots and all that stuff. You guys are back at full health. Um, oh, and a long rest. Yep. Ooh. Uh, there is one thing that we do need to discuss. Uh, in regards to the wish Minnow made, actually, um, one of the requirements mm-hmm. of wish uh, is that there is the possibility, uh, specifically, I believe, a 33.3 repeating percent chance of what precisely, JD? Want to fill us in? Uh, since, you'll, since you're going to have to do the roll on it. Did roll. We did the roll. Oh, did we? What did we... I forgot. I forgot the role. What do you remember? We, deci- we decided not to tell anybody and let them find out. Oh, what? Shit. Well, then could you DM me because I don't fucking remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm, secret I'm, secrets I'm, no, are I'm no just... fun unless they're shared with everyone. Yeah. No, I, I'm just I'm just gonna suddenly cast wish later on because I can. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah, um, oh. I I think I rolled a thirty-seven. Okay. Instead, you know, uh, needed to beat thirty-three. Oh. So does this mean that you will be able to cast Wish again? I can. I, you can. I can okay. Yes. Okay. But essentially, Only just though. but from a from a meta gaming perspective, nobody necessarily <clears throat> knows per se. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. I I would know, but nobody else would know. I right. wouldn't. I'd pretty much know straight after I cast it, because mm-hmm. technically the roll needs to happen at the end of the Wish. Right. Um, right. But yeah. Yeah. So, does everybody get that from a metagaming perspective? Is yes. That nobody knows about that particular thing, right? I can't even remember it to begin with. Okay. Did <laughs> I ever know this particular thing? Well, no, no, nobody does in the party. From, from what I was saying, then from a metagaming easy. perspective, is that nobody would know that Minnow has the ability to make another wish, essentially down the okay. down the line. Um, Magic so yeah. every day. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I need to have everyone, uh, Graham, yourself included, uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. Do do I do this as well? Nope. Okay. Just wanting to clarify. Yeah, I don't have to do shit. I have to find my mm-hmm. plus five. So I have to find my thing. Twenty-one. <clears throat> uh, did you want me to roll perception? Uh, yes. Everybody needs to Ooh. go ahead and roll perception as this um, <laughs> uh, skid mark. Uh, you're actually just g- going to town on that back end rim of yours, um, and uh, <laughs> you don't see anything. Um, uh, Minnow, you definitely don't see anything except for obscene things through a through a tent window. Um, but Calypso, you do actually smell something. You don't necessarily particularly Uh-oh. see something, but you smell something. And it smells really good. It smells Ooh. like bacon. It smells like eggs. It smells like hash browns. Breakfast? Uh, at this point here, um, for that individual person that's outside, I would say, at the fire. Uh, we'll do this here for, for narrative sake, just to go ahead and move things along here. Uh, as you guys, uh, you kind of announce this to the group, you always say, hey, somebody cooking? Um, you guys actually take a step out of the tent, and you see a fairy with a little tiny, uh, little cast iron frying pan, uh, cook it exactly that. Bacon, eggs, hash browns. And we'll go ahead and introduce Violet with her fairy character. Can you tell us a little bit about what the characters see from uh, what your character looks like? Okay, so I am a fairy, so I have wings and stuff. Um, she has some greenish wings of different shades of green and very earthy, um, Longer hair, blue eyes, no jewelry, just no candies on the ground. Uh, Very down to earth, but one hell of a cook because she actually keeps her cooker's tools with her. That's part of her, um, part of what she carries with her. So she keeps, there's a specific thing for cooking that she carries with her and I can't remember it. So yes, she makes, yes. (laughs) Yes, she carries an instant pot, and she's using Skidmox Buckle as a power source. Ooh. Yeah. Feels good. Now, how large is this I'm going to interject here and say that that's not canon. Oh, man. <laughs> I came up with it, and I was so proud of it. And I'm, now my dreams wait, are I'm, back. Is this not canon that it's good soup or something else? 
Well, I don't want to give everybody the impression that, you know, Skidmark's asshole is like an unlimited power source all of a sudden, and all of us <laughs> were like giving him like a, you know, like a butt plug to like, hey, I need a recharge on my, on my shell phone, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> Would fair enough. He's about Darn. this size. Okay. Where would that power be coming from? It wouldn't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and she, uh, Cricket is not as busty because you know busty fairies, uh, they can't fly that well. Can she plug Cause... her oven into my butt? I can be the guest. <laughs> oh God. I'm going to say from a <laughs> no, narrative okay. perspective here that uh, your fairy character of um what was what's her name so I can address Cricket. her Cricket there we go. Uh Cricket, I would say that you're able to go ahead and cook this food not necessarily as like a, a hot plate um but as more so off of the the last remaining coals from last <laughs> night's fire from Haman Koss and all the craziness that ensued from we'll say session zero <laughs> from a podcast perspective so in other negative words, infinite the, the dm is saying you cannot use skid mops but for correct yeah. correct i'm gonna do a hard stop on that <laughs> okay and there are other i'm there, so proud there, of it too yep, yep, yep. like i know that graham loves butt stuff so that was a way for me to engage with him well first he, he said yeah. it couldn't be a power source but he didn't say it couldn't be used to well, I guess you're fuel saying power, source. Yeah, fuel source, power source, <laughs> any sort of source except for. So this is this is like a Herbert the Pervert Junior character that you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. Um, the <laughs> other to thing back around in that direction. Yeah. The other thing to keep in mind is that Cricket is a druid and a cleric. Ooh. A so druid it? and a cleric. Yep, and I made sure that she is already in the campaign. So out of game. Violet, did you just kind of decide you wanted to go a different route and you were wanted a new character? I... Or did Astrid get obliterated by the wish? She's not obliterated. Okay. She's somewhere. So if can can I not metagame, but mm -hmm. prod for clues? I.e. Sure. There's a letter addressed to you guys with some items okay. that will explain exactly. So we need what to look, look around and for the <laughs> see letter, if yes. any evidence of Astrid. Okay. Yes. All right. She yes. left a letter for you guys. So, Fairy, what is what is your name? I I may I think I might have forgot. I didn't catch it. I mean, Cricket. Critter. Cricket. <laughs> I'm gonna punch you in the face. And here's the thing: I left the finger flicker to myself. Oh. <laughs> Don't flip <laughs> up with the flying for, finger flicker. For those that are listening to episode one of a of a trinket that was given to you many sessions ago, what does the finger flicker do specifically, Cricket? Uh, so it does what it says. It flicks the finger. It's uh, mechanic in nature. And fate powered. It's, uh, yes. Depending on what you roll, it can do psychological damage. Yeah. Up to and including and making you a drooling idiot. Yeah, which I did. <laughs> I, At a very inconvenient time. Yes. Yeah, very. it's fine though. It basically ruined Graham's <laughs> one shot don't... until he got some some laffy taffy. Um, yeah, don't don't fuck with the finger which, flicker, which especially is... the flying finger flicker. Mm -hmm. uh, which is for for everybody on the podcast that is from uh, our one off. Um, that we just did Carnival on Twitch, shenanigans, which will be on on Patreon mm -hmm. here shortly. So, uh, you guys will be able to to join that here soon as well. Any hoodles? So, uh, you, Violet, why don't you go ahead and give us kind of a rundown of what everybody's letter says? We'll say from it's a, a letter. We'll say from yeah, a, from like a, a retcon perspective. This is kind of like a uh, uh, just in case things happen to me. Cricket was mm -hmm. a, the courier uh, to make sure things were delivered to individuals. Yes. So it was a letter to everybody. Um, but it's basically, it's not a will, but it's kind of laid out like a will. Uh, so she says that she found out that she has a family member that needs her desperately and needs her help. And that she didn't know that this family member existed at all. So she felt that she needed to depart to go take care of this family. Um, she did leave some instructions. So for the Sword of Moth, she left that to Minnow. Uh, she left the magical candy to Connie. To Calypso. She, 
Yes, to Calypso. That's mine. Yes. Uh, She left all of her food and her bow and arrow to Skidmock, and she had another little musical trinket that she left to... Is it Kane? Is that your character's name, MT? Uh, Karna. 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 So she left the music box to Karna. Uh, She also has requested that Minnow and Calypso take care of Charles Jr. until he can make decisions for himself and asked that you two deliver one of her rings to him to make sure that like she's always a part of him and that she still really cares about him and when she can come back she will. Uh, This goes against what actually happened uh, from the letters. These letters were written uh, preemptively um, but you guys know that um, she disappeared uh, last evening, immediately following Minnow's wish. Mm. 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 Somebody was a spy. Oh. Wouldn't it be an amazing plot twist if, like, the most wholesome character was actually the most evil? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> what if she was Narek in disguise all along? <gasps> yeah. But that wouldn't have been possible because of the wish. Um, but actually, this all came to be. I was. I love Astrid, but she wasn't a character that I created. And now that I've been playing more D and D, I wanted to really play a character that yeah. I made myself. Yeah, <clears throat> well, I was custom when I came in. But yeah. Yes. Yep, that's well, true. that's because <laughs> you're, there's nobody that compares. Oh, that was really sweet. Yeah. See, cricket can be wholesome too. <laughs> She's just a little flighty so, sometimes. So anyway, hopping, more of my ADHD. Yeah, get, getting back to the hopping, game, hopping up yes. into, yeah. the, into the narrative. Uh, Cricket, you've uh, gone ahead and, and put down your pots and pans, and basically uh, uh, came over. I made sure that everybody was who they said they were, um, and you basically go ahead and hand out these envelopes after explaining that you know, you're a, a courier that upon their death that that uh, are upon said uh, triggers uh, that you were to you were sent out here essentially mm-hmm. well we're down a person in our party I, th- I think we should should just invite you into this party that was actually like requested in the letters as well that if I was invited that I am welcome and that I will take over her journal Man, we have a uh, pair of pants if if you want to party in that. No. Uh, so yeah, this as uh, once uh, she finishes up handing out these items here, uh, I would say from a narrative perspective here for those people like myself in the back of my mind saying, hey, that doesn't make sense. If, if I'm a courier and I deliver letters and I was told like, hey, deliver these letters and then give up everything that you did in your life, like the job <laughs> that you just got paid for for currying this and then you know, be like a party person. I would say that as a stipulation of the contract, once it was open and read for the first time, um, there was a small portion uh, aside to say, whoever is assigned uh, as a courier uh, to deliver this, please uh, take my gold uh, as compensation. Um, so to, to sweeten the deal so that you were less uh, likely to go back to your old life <laughs> as a take courier. Take my money. <laughs> take my money. <laughs> take my money and be me. She left me the farting flower. What? Oh god, I forgot about that. Blue flower from the first session. Ah, I forgot about that. So everybody, I want you to make sure that you keep track of these things because there are very important items that were were given out as part of her inventory and I will not keep track of them. So if you do not have them, I would expect you not to use them. (laughs) So anything else from uh, uh, Astrid's inventory is uh, null and void. So, everything out of your inventory that you need to, Astrid? Yep. Cool. All right. So, you guys are, are basically given these last remaining items, and uh, Cricket, uh, you go ahead and take a, a huge gold sack and put it on your hip. Um, uh. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what the situation was with Astrid and her coin purse, uh, but essentially you guys are basically left on top of Old Owl Well, uh, at which point I want you guys to give me a perception check. Everybody. Ooh, I get to use my new dice. Just... 25. I see everything. I think. Roll a 9. <laughs> <laughs> I roll 19. Hey, 15. Plus 1, 16. These dice look a badass. Okay, cool buddy. Noises too. I would say that everybody except for Minnow 
unfortunately. Minnow gets some different dice. Um, I would say everybody except for <laughs> Minnow um, notices that last night you guys were still sleeping on the top of Old Owl Well, or at least what was left of the ruins. And from what you remember, this was basically like an open, like a hill that was completely barren, uh, except for some, some small... Uh, bits of grass, but there's a number of trees and very large bushy bushes that have somehow sprung up overnight. It seems that the forest is starting to reclaim Calypso. What was once uh, so evil that it would uh, extinguish the the most basic life. You need outside. to get a new razor for Calypso. What? <laughs> bushy bushes. <laughs> oh my god. The oh forest. My god. The forest <laughs> is springing back up. <laughs> I just smack him upside the back of the head. I'm uh, way over here. I'm not by you. Griffith looks yeah. over. Hey, uh, I do have the, the head. I can finger flick him from space <laughs> because <laughs> I can fly. <laughs> it was worth it. All right. So what are you guys doing? You got a fresh, uh, fresh new day. Everybody went right to sleep after uh, Minnow's wish last evening. After all the shenanigans, uh, what are you guys gonna do? I made breakfast. <coughs> what did you make for breakfast? Thank you, of course, uh, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so there is various meats, there is eggs, there's potatoes, and there's some crusty bread. Oh, I want the crusty bread. Uh, mm. There are some. Thank you, Cricket. All this is arranged on a small, kind of like makeshift table, uh, all fairy size. So all these, these little prepared meals of this uh, egg buffet that. Uh, uh, Cricket has prepared is is very small. I would say there's basically like a half of a handful of uh, of everything that you could fit into your hand from this smorgasbord, and that would be like a the eggs are quail's eggs. Oh no, fifty <laughs> quail eggs, right? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know how I carried oh, them. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's actually really delicious for for the small amount. Like she, it like knocks your socks off, damn near. Um, this is really delicious uh, breakfast and uh, gives you that uh, that edge uh, that you guys need for the day. Mm. It's the most important meal. Thank you so much, Cricket. This is delicious. Happy to help. Skidmark, how exactly who the... are you here? I mean, I'm glad you're back. But are you? Are you really? Insight check on that. I mean, <laughs> what? what are you doing, MT? You're doing an insight check on whatever he's saying. No, she's uh, she said uh, saying that she's glad he's back. Okay. I said I'm glad right. that Skidmark is back, but. All right, go ahead. Do an insight. See if. Uh... Uh, oh, I rolled bad again. Why am I rolling this bad? Seven plus five. Oh no, it's twelve. You're welcome to do deception or perception to compete uh, compete against yep. it. You don't, you don't really uh, have to tell me which one you're trying to roll. Behind, behind the scenes, Calypso, are you genuinely concerned? Um, Behind the scenes, Calypso's favorite enemy is dragons, and she lumps dragonborns into that category. Mm -hmm. She doesn't necessarily hate him, but he's not her favorite teammate. She doesn't want him dead or anything. She is glad he's alive. So is, that what, oh, my is that what my character is picking up? It was a full up? sincerity. Yeah, I mean, you probably would get, get probably probably pick the... up that I'm not with with getting some sort of not lying, but I'm not it. super excited that he's back. Are you picking up what she's dropping down? Uh, uh, I'm putting down what she's picking up. Who who is your favorite? Because I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, Astrid was my favorite, but she's gone now. Big shoes, <laughs> literally and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what are we doing, you guys? Uh, I want to start uh, figuring out where we're going. How do we know where we need to go? Yeah, do we even have quests anymore? Oh, uh, yeah. To... I, all the quests that you guys currently have are still uh, exactly active. <clears throat> Although you guys... be active when the Wish should have at least changed some of them. Nope. Anything that had anything to do with Narek <laughs> should be no longer valid. No, it's still valid. <laughs> you still have a, a deal with Grifto McBeg to return his fork. I thought oh. that Grifto was an associate of Narek, though. No. Grifto nope. is Narek's father. So that's not an association? No, technically, Narek is a subordinate so of... So association and subordinate are two completely different things. I may be associated with you, um, Calypso, as Oh, a was the phrase subordinate? Right, right. Yeah. So anybody okay. that would directly answer to him 
type of situation. Okay. Yeah, not yeah, those yeah. above. Uh, so just from a, a DM perspective here, the, the quest that you guys currently have that is active is going to be you know, the uh, returning of uh, uh, Narek Falk, uh, or not Narek Falkris fork, uh, but um, Grifto McBeg's fork. Um, you also need to, uh, you have the quest of uh, going to Thunder Tree uh, to go ahead and get the necklace. Uh, from the uh, the slaves that you rescued from the um, uh, Trazendor Manor. Well, what was the main reason oh. why you guys came oh, to this and location? I, I remember. Uh, we came oh. out from underneath. Like yeah, we, we opened just... up from the dungeon and came out. This is where the necromancer was with the... Humming uh, cost. Yeah. Because you guys have been here at least twice before. The first mm-hmm. time when you guys passed through and uh, did a job for Humming cost and got a TPK and then got introduced to the, the plane of mischief. Um, mm-hmm. The second time you guys came back and says, you know, yeah, we've ended up fi- finishing, you know, everybody off killing everybody. Uh, and then this will be the third encounter with hum and cost, <coughs> or should I say was last <laughs> of hum and cost uh, outside of that. You do have a, another quest uh, that was, that led off on the uh, returning the fork where you last left off. You were given the, uh, um, the directions to go to Neverwinter, uh, Neverwinter's library, where you would more than likely find uh, Margaine probably in a pile of books, is what uh, Grifto had said last. Friends, what shall we do? Uh, outside of that, uh, based upon those other conversations that we had, everybody, during that dream sequence, uh, those are now uh, also uh, considered those quests for those who made deals and not deals for others that didn't make deals. Uh, <laughs> not quests for those who didn't. So not everybody made a deal. He lied to me. I don't know. <laughs> basically, everybody that uh, everything that happened in the the dreamscape uh, basically happened, and those who are required to fulfill their end of the deal is required to fulfill their end of the deal. Um, and for those who either didn't get that inner inner uh, encounter uh, or just happened to arrive as a new character, didn't get that uh, that conversation. But if you agreed to do something, then you are contractually obligated to do it, and I would consider that a quest. <laughs> Connie, did you just say bitch? <laughs> it's a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. So this is. Are, are you, so let's, let's role play this here real quick. Are you are you like internalizing like what happened yeah. last night? Are you kind of like opening up? Or are you telling everybody what happened to you? Or like, hey, I I. Well, it has you. been just running through my mind, but now I'm gonna say, hey, did anybody else have a weird dream last night by any chance? Nope. Nope. Actually, now that you say it, I had a dream that, like, I was, like, I don't know. It was, like, it was in Candyland, and it was really fucking weird, man. Hi. (laughs) I'm going to stand up. Listen up, everybody. Martin Luther King said this, so pay attention. Who's that? Who's that? Is this black dwarf that (laughs) rolled around and spoke for... (laughs) Equal rights for gnomes and dwarves said that oh. humans were unfair. So, uh, we are... Skidmark, is this, is, this, is this a true thing that happened, or is this a lie that you're telling? Because if it's a lie, I want you to roll a deception. No, it's not a lie. Okay. It's not a lie. I, I, I'm not a liar. It was taught in Dragonborn school. Okay, okay. So... He said, I had a dream. One day we could walk down the streets, not have butterfly dicks fly at us. And I had another dream where bald-headed men with red beards would not throw sticky goo at us. And then I had another dream where I don't remember what he looked like, but he giggled at me a lot and put his hand on my knee and said, have a seat, son. I'm going to talk to you about your butt and souls and the fact that you don't have any in there. And then one day, uh, as I sat down in this chair with this weird man's hand on my knee, I I said, "Well, why why am I looking in my butt, sir? Uh, why do you want me to look in my butt?" And he says, "Well, you owe one hundred million souls. One hundred million souls. Is it one hundred million? I was told ten million. Yeah, it's one hundred million souls. Mm. And uh, so then I said that um, you know I I too have a dream where everybody can be happy and you can be happy if you feel that you have the money to spend. 
because if you look at my sales chart here, you could spend this much money and be the happiest person in the world, but he wouldn't fall for that. So instead, he said, I owe 100 million souls, and I asked for 5,000 gold, and I have a timepiece here. Does anybody know what a timepiece is? Would you like to tell us? I, I bet you're going to tell us. No, I'm not going to tell you. So the, <laughs> uh, you. the it will tell me what time it is, no matter where we are. It will tell me where I am when I open this thing, and it will tell me how many souls I have left to collect. Uh, so Graham, repeat that for me one, one more time. It will tell me what time it is, no matter where we are. It will tell me where I am. And it will tell me how many souls I have left to collect. And then I also demanded that no matter what weapon I carry, it will glow green if I am near a vampire. A lot like, uh, you know, if you ever saw that movie, uh, The Bobbits, and he had a sword that glowed green around the 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 Thorks. Yeah, the Lord of the Circlets. Yeah, the Lord of the Circlets. They didn't didn't do a really good job when it came to, like... um, you know, the naming convention went through a lot of uh, a lot of sessions, a lot of a lot of work groups. Penis rings, and so the uh, oh, I thought it was cock rings because they wanted to incorporate roosters. I, I think that was oh. a different fantasy movie. I think it's... that that might be some fanfic, maybe. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm no, like... I think that so, are, are we are we talking about the adult film? Well, there was a there was one centered around a farm. Yep. Okay. What? I can't what? tell. I can't tell if we're in character anymore at this I'm point. I'm so confused right now. Yeah, let's, can, can we hop back into character real quick, please? I, I, I am in can character. So you just guys? so let's rewind here for just a second. You just told the the group here, Skidmark, that the you have a uh, your sword will glow green uh, if there is a vampire close. Yeah, uh, any weapon that I hold. So w- why did you owe him souls? I didn't ask. I just, I, you know, we started talking about things, and we both forgot why I was there. He asked for souls and you're like, ah, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> sure. If, you ask, if you ask politely. <laughs> well, I thought the souls were in my butt, so I looked in my butt, but there wasn't anything in my butt. Now, now, Calypso, you don't seem so surprised by any of this either, and you, I think you, you even corrected him on a number. I had a very similar, well, a similarly strange dream last night, and a man told me that I was to take on a debt from Narek to collect uh-huh. 10,000, or 10 million souls. Hmm, that is correct. Uh, is it 10 million or was it 100 million? You told me 10 million. I think we should. All right. This is where we're going to need the party I'm assuming, to come together. I'm assuming Jay, uh, Minnow mm-hmm. is not having any sort of reaction to any of these inf- uh, so, new information other than surprise like <laughs> I am. No, I'm, lis- I'm listening it quietly um, because I have my own. I, I'm, I have my own reasons to keep quiet because of what I know. But I, yeah, so um, skid, try to Skidmark, his... as oh, real quick before you do that here, uh, Skidmark, um, as you're uh, kind of discussing this, you kind of pull this um, <clears throat> this timepiece out and kind of show everybody uh, its features, um, and you Ooh. show everybody the the, the five thousand gold that you have in this giant bag uh, that is now filled to the absolute brim. Like it's if you were to like get stabbed or somebody slashed you just right they would they would literally spill this uh, this bag of coin uh, and it's actually pretty quite heavy um, uh, but when you open up the timepiece here um, uh, there's some letters on on this uh, on this timepiece um, it's uh, it uh, the first uh, piece here uh, says um, it's now which uh, it which is uh, two uh, two sets now. of words. Uh, on this outer p- size of this uh, um, watch, essentially, it just says it's now. Uh, when you open it up, uh, it says um, <laughs> bullshit. It op- you open it up and it says you are here, um, and uh, the little I there's a, a little uh, mechanical uh, readout uh, that says ten million souls. Okay. Uh, when you go on and uh, you realize what's happening here, uh, it's that point. Uh, where you pull off your helmet um, and you discover that there is just a single blonde hair uh, at the very kind of back of your of your head, re- meeting the requirement of short in the front, long in the back. Oh, that's like the biggest F you from a DM. 
<laughs> See, based upon the, the exact wordage that was used, that's what was agreed upon. It would tell the time wherever you are. It's now. Where are you? You are here. <laughs> <laughs> What about the um, tracking of souls? Is it just saying like, that you owe him ten that million? Is, that's all. That is actually a uh, um, uh, the actual mechanical piece um, that okay. is uh, that did uh, come to full fruition. Essentially, so it will actually tell us how many souls. Correct. We need. Correct. You would make that assumption that it would uh, that it would change. Uh, because that instead of just words that says you know it's now it's here, um, it actually has the readout that says ten million on it, and it just says zero of ten million under underneath. Yeah, uh, it actually has uh, uh, says how many is owed. It says ten million owed souls. It's at this point I want everybody to also um, for those who made deals. Um, so it's at this point that everybody who made deals uh, notices a little bit of small uh, burning sensation in the palm of your hand, uh, where you guys mm. actually see this uh, symbol uh, that I'm actually uploading into the D and D chat at this point here, uh, which is a dark circle with two little curly cues coming off, uh, almost as if they're like ram's horns. Huh. Mm. There is this black symbol on your palm. Did you say curly cues? Check chat. Yes. Yeah, check chat, Graham. Where? In chat. Discord, D and D. Just chatting? Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, no, D &D. no, no, no. That, no that's in Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. And Dragons. Yep. Dragons dream track. Nope. No, just Dungeons honey. and Dragons. Ah, uh, you have so many chat channels. <laughs> I see it. I see it now. <laughs> Hi there. Oh, Hi there, Mr. Mr. Biden. We're playing D and D. Uh, you play the character of Skidmark, and uh, you're a dragonborn, which is super cool because you guys love Rocky Road ice cream. So. <laughs> and he heals. So yeah, you guys have that symbol. Uh, whoever made deals uh, has that symbol on their on their palm. Oh, yeah, it looks like a pube. <laughs> um, Seriously, that's what you have to say, Mister Mister Karna. Uh, go Seriously, ahead and say you, you, you wanted to do a roll. Could you explain that to us again? Oh, I wanted to. I wanted to compare uh, his reaction to see if he had any mm. sort of familiarity with what they were talking about, uh, Minos. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see if he had any sort of like react or like uh, after hearing everything, reaction to it. Minos, um, what what is your facial expression right now? What's going on? And MT, are you saying this out loud? Like, hey, like Minos, what's your deal? Not necessarily out loud. It's just more like uh, trying to make observations. Like I've okay. made one with. Uh, Calypso. Minnow, what would he essentially mm. see on your face? What uh, would you be, you know, trying to hide any type of facial expressions? What would you be doing? Um, I'm thinking about uh, the deal that I made and how it differs from everybody else's. Um, so well, and I'm I may not think, know hey, that I'm clever. I may not know that you have made a deal unless I ask it, mm. but you at least have some familiarity of what he's talking about. Oh, I absolutely recognize the deal that you all have had put in front of you, and that um, I, rec I recognize having been offered the, a similar deal. Um, uh, whether or not that is the deal I accepted or rejected or made another deal is um, that you're not sure. But yeah, you do recognize, uh, <laughs> you recognize the recognition. <laughs> so MT, you, you know from Minnow's face, something went down. Mm. But he's, he's so not is there talking. a time? Uh, so so Skidmark, is there a time limit that you you guys have to complete this? I don't know. I didn't ask. If I was thirty uh, days. Thirty days. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. Behind the scenes, Graham. You're fucked. Graham, you were actually told during the conversation. I don't know if you heard it, but I did say um, uh, "great reset." I don't know what that means. That's right. Well, you didn't ask when in the dream sequence either. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's the thing. I think it might have just been a miscommunication that you may have not heard it, or you heard it and then yeah. didn't say, "Hey, what was that?" So, so Calypso, did you, so you you had like a very similar encounter? I did. There was no butt inspections in my encounter, but it was just this wooden room. There was a man in there. He lit a candle and just launched right into you. You owe me ten million souls because you're responsible for Narek's disappearance. And I'm like, what? I didn't do anything. And he insisted that if I didn't do this, then he would take it out on the rest of our party members. I'm assuming, Cricket, you're also in the unknown, unknowing because yeah, you showed I just up got here. Me. Just like, just like me, of course. I I didn't <laughs> have a weird dream or. I mean, I had a weird dream, dream, but it was about Candyland. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that, that's that's weird in general. Yeah, not specifically weird. So, Minnow, do you do you have anything to add to any of all of this of? 
these well, dealings that they've made? Any comment on it, at least? I think you're all a bit gullible to have just accepted the deal <laughs> and not and not a, a, not gone in for a counter offer. I mean, uh, from from the sounds of it, uh, from what you're telling me, or what you're telling, what we're all telling each other, um, none of you put in a counter offer. You just accepted or declined. Well, well, at no, least all of you at, accepted. At least Kidmark at least did one thing: ask for a timepiece. Yeah, didn't okay. go in great detail yeah. about it. At, at least Kidmark took like one step in trying to make a counter offer. Hmm. I'm not trying to hmm. say anything about you, uh, Calypso, but you, you you probably could have sweetened the deal. I guess. I'm sorry. I was half asleep. I was scared and confused. Uh, a dream sequence? It yeah. It yeah. It was a dream sequence. This all took place in your guys' dreams. Uh, I would say to you guys, from a character perspective, that uh, those that uh, made a deal uh, are very um, uh, didn't get much restful sleep. It felt like you were you were awake essentially during the night <laughs> while you were sleeping essentially in the in the dream sequence. Uh, you still have all your guys' uh, health points and stuff like that. All your guys' spell slots are, are filled again. Um, but uh, and you guys are you know technically you know had a, a long rest. Um, but you guys don't feel necessarily that you guys had good sleep. Mm. So yeah. Um, uh, Karna, Karna and Cricket got great sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm just a little laid down because of all the gold and stuff and it being larger than my person. Um, but other than that, it's fine. I'll just have to convert it into digital currency and it'll be great. For for narrative's oh, yeah. sake, uh, Cricket, what, uh, how much gold did uh, Astrid have? Let me pull that up because just I actually game. I'm was kinda working... Curious. I kind of want to see, yeah. like, from a uh, from a mind's eye, I kind of want to see what or uh, what how big would that be from a narrative perspective. Oh, I'm <laughs> going to my inventory. Every fifty coins is a pound in weight. Well, oh, what about the bag of holding? I don't know what the physics are with the bag of holding. There's a weight amount for a bag of holding. There's a limit. Yeah, yeah. and you size guys of the mouth. I have seventy four gold pieces and five silver pieces. Okay. So there'd be a sizable bag, uh, a little bit bigger of, a uh, little bit bigger than, um, like a, a softball, essentially. But it's mm-hmm. still... yeah, so about the, the half my size. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Frick, I know we just met, so I understand if you don't want to trust me yet, but I'm willing to hold that for you if you'd like. Let me just write down how much I have, and then <laughs> like I'll treat you like my ATM. Okay? Sound good? Okay. Okay, I'll make you. I'll make you mini muffins periodically Ooh, when dang. we're camping. Okay, okay, great. And I'm just looking up at you. Can I? Can I sit on? Can I sit on your mushroom? <laughs> of course. Hell yeah. Glad you're not asking a guy can, that. Uh, from a <laughs> podcast perspective, I'd like you to consider those words. And and it's what fine. we're missing from, uh, from a visual perspective is that. On, on Calypso's game piece inside the uh, inside this game, or playing you know, with our eyes, with our peepers, uh, at the at the base of her character, she has mushrooms and little leaves and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. O- otherwise, it sounds like hey, look, you know, ride my mushroom. You know. Yeah, that's why I said as long as you're not asking a guy, yeah. unless mm. you're into that. Well, no, ladies can have mushrooms too. Well, that's a fungal infection. You want to get that sorted? <laughs> well, I mean oh yeast. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> That's well. Also, you might want to be careful, uh, Calypso, because I did give you the magic candy, and magic candy and yeast might not go together that well. Record: I do not have mushrooms of that kind. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> no, I'm just, no. I'm just Was that in character or out of character? That... I'm gonna check your. Uh, I'm gonna roll investigation. <laughs> on yeast in okay. and out of character. That was everybody I'm associating. I'm, I'm gonna roll okay. investigation on Calypso. Okay, I'm gonna take what, the initiative. Hold on, hold on. Try to bring us onto some sort of quest. Hold on, hold on. Graham, I need you to tell me what you're investigating before I'm you. Investigating go. to see if <laughs> he has any mushrooms of that kind. What exactly are you doing? Now? Yeah, I'm, I'm very I'm curious at you too. From afar, and I'm sensing if I can smell mushrooms on you. Because that's gonna work. I rolled eighteen. Okay, I would say that you don't, as you like, lean in to like sniff. You don't smell anything of that sort. You just smell, uh, like the covers and stuff like that from Haman Koss' tent. Uh, it smells of like a, almost like a, a hint of like sweet tobacco, like he would uh, like smoke a pipe in the evening. Oh, oh, well, so it smells sp- like my grandpa. Ooh, right, I, I like grandpa's smell. Okay. Yeah, common cost. Yeah, he definitely was a grandpa. Yeah, um, he definitely smelled my, like a grandpa. My character's a big fan oh, yeah. of that. So yeah, you uh, you lean in, uh, Skidmock, and uh, you sniff, and that's what you sniff. 
Clipso, how are you reacting to this? Um, I was waiting for something a little bit more inappropriate. I was fully prepared to smack him, but I'm okay with a sniff from a little bit of a distance. I'm just kind of eyeing him wearily. Let, let, let's try get, uh, getting on to some sort of quest. Let's let's progress the story, you guys. <laughs> oh, you want to play? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we wanted just talking, we could do just talking later. <laughs> okay, I guess we could play. So, what do you guys want to do? For those who took notes and know what's all available out in the world. I'm going to try to uh, tickle Minnow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So that's a vote for no on playing the actual game. Minnow, uh, how, are you, how are you reacting? Are you accepting said tickle? Or are you uh, saying like, hey, uh, no? Depends. Depends. What exactly is he going to tickle? I mean, I see this hand coming towards me. Is it coming high, low, upskirt? What's he doing? Yeah. Skidmark, what uh, what specifically are you doing with, uh, with said hand? I haven't decided yet. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, you better decide. You're coming at me. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. He just jabbed his hand into you and just like I, I attempted a tickle but I failed. <laughs> yeah, you just just shoving it anywhere. I just um, get, I'm, get what you can grope. I'm gonna come in yeah. at uh, waist level. Oh, fine. Like a wholesome tickle. Uh, yeah, uh, I allow it. Okay. On what part of body are you tickling, Skidmark? I'm gonna tickle him around like the just above the hips. Ooh, good old ham bone spot. All right, all right. Mm. Minnow, he's yeah. he's squeezing on your hips. You know, do with a little two little uh, you know thumb and uh, and uh, index finger. How are you reacting to to this? Um, ooh, let's see. I'd, I'd like the two players to role play this out really quick, okay. just so okay. for the podcast. So, we can, uh, so uh, as he as he comes in to uh, place his hands on my hips, uh, he's shorter than me. Isn't he? Uh, I uh, how, reach out. Uh, how tall is yeah, Skidmark, cool. actually? Actually, how um, tall are both of your characters from a Minotaur and a Dragonborn perspective? How tall are your characters? To answer Minnow's question of how, where does he come up to him? I, uh, uh, yeah, because I am eight, eight foot tall plus a foot of horns above. I'm six foot four. Okay, so you okay. basically come up to my chest. Hmm. Uh, I think I just reach out and I put my hands on your shoulders and brace for it. <laughs> so, yeah. I, uh, you guys are kind of embracing at this point here, uh, Skidmark. You doing the tickling allegedly, and Minnow's yeah. just bracing for it. You go ahead and start uh, beginning to to go ahead and tickle him. Um, at least you Gucci, think. Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. Uh, mm. Minnow, are you ticklish? Is this ticklish to you, or are you just um, you know, not, hold his not shoulders? particularly? What's not going particularly, What's going through Minnow's mind right now? What's going through Minnow's mind is the uh, the fact that this this creature is a, a paladin. And he's very tempted to to grab a fistful of the hair on the back of your head and snap your neck. <laughs> Wait a minute, I only well, have hold one on. hair. It, it would be a fistful of hair, as in singular. Not yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be hair as such, but it would be scales or whatever. Oh, you know, okay, it, okay. it would be. You know, it would, it would be it would be your dorsal fin down your neck or something oh. back there. It would be whatever it is. Because yeah. I've only got the single blonde hair. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You, you just got that one. Pl I'll pluck it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, Minnow, uh, I, want you, I, want you, I want you to make a strength, uh, strength saving throw. Uh, I want you to roll anything other than a one is going to pluck this SOB out of his head. <laughs> a, strength, a strength save or a strength? Go do uh, a strength check. A strength check. Yep. 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 Well, it can't uh, be a one because I got plus seven on it. Uh, that is a nineteen plus seven. All right, it's coming Basics. out. Graham, you're one less of a hair on your head, leaving you with zero. <laughs> exactly <laughs> zero hairs on your head. It... Oh, well, at least I was able to. So you I don't know. Know. Dream sequence My... giveth, minnow taketh away. I guess. You can <laughs> <laughs> My face hurts from smiling too much during that scene. It was just. <laughs> Okay, on that note, um, and then I smack him on to... the butt, I... let's go do a quest, huh? I have a quest. I, I think okay. we should all go to hell. Is that an insult, or are you actually suggesting it? Uh, roll an insult check and find out. <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's what you're going to tell you, but... <laughs> uh, where's my dime? Insight? I'm rolling yeah. insight. Uh, <laughs> so, what's the um um? I'm a little bit lost here. I'm doing some stuff in the background here to do game prep. What it, what are you inciting as to whether or not Minnow is what lying? What are you, you trying to infer? That? No, because I I said I said I think we all go to hell. 
Yes. And they're oh, like, and do I'm you mean that as as hell like or do you mean Figuratively that as or literally is what you're saying. Exactly. Okay, okay. Exactly. So that's what the investigation. So, okay. And uh, they, so, they asked. They asked. So I was like, I well, that's an insight roll, isn't it? Uh, 18 was rolled. I got a 15. Oh, pardon me? Yeah. Mm. Game log was 15. It sounds like, so, sounds like I want to go to the plains of hell. So, yes. Yeah, sorry. Pardon me. I was doing some stuff behind the scenes here for the for Twitch here. Um, yes, uh, for insight check Skidmock, you would know that he's being very literal, very literal here. There's there's no question here that he's that he's being figurative as like, you know, hey, go to hell. He he means this literally. Oh, you actually mean let's go to hell. Oh, yeah. I got business to do. What you want to do in hell? Yes. Well, you all made a deal, or rather, you all accepted a deal. I renegotiated. You say you all. Could you just include those two over there only, please? Because Cricket and I are innocents. Well, I mean, I'm innocent in this specific facet, but not innocent in general. <laughs> okay, we're this not for clarification all purposes. We're, we're not 100 percent innocent. We all have our inner demons. Well, Some go visit are actual. Large... <laughs> yeah. Ten million souls or whatever it was well i didn't either but how'd you get out of it i asked if there was another way i asked if there's another way he seemed very interested in another deal that was more personal to him he has a boss he wants got rid of we get rid of his boss he gets a promotion he wipes the slate like wiping your butt oh, oh yeah he wiped my butt yeah <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't like a normal sheet of paper, My though. You know, this was good. cotton buds it, right up there. Uh, it nice Minna, can I see the palm of your hoof? Uh, my hand, my hands. I have, my hoofs oh, are. You in, have hands? On, I have hands on up above and Sorry. hoofs down below. Sorry, I haven't really looked that closely at your. That's Minotaurist. Yeah. It is. How <laughs> yeah. dare! I'm sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is funny. What do you think I am? A plain bull? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, but of course you can see my the, my hand, and it uh, it has the, the mark on it, doesn't it? Oh, it does? Okay. Because mm. I made a deal. It's just my deal was different. I wonder if your deal would supersede my deal, and I could renegotiate. Well, that's as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need to get any souls, but I do have to kill someone. <laughs> that was the first suggestion oh, oh. that that we have had so far. So I suggest we probably go with the, let's go to hell. Okay. Um, just, Anyone go handbasket? I mean, <laughs> if if there is a handbasket, can I please ride in it? Or can I ride on one of you? I've got little legs. Can't you, oh wait, you said you can't fly. I can fly, can but fly, also but hell. Tired. Like, in like hell, like wouldn't my wings burn? Uh, magic. Don't I have to prefer? I'm, don't I have to like protect them and keep them safe? I, I, like, was, I don't think there's. I don't know how that works. Do you I believe in magic? You we'll, on my we, we will cross no. that bridge when we come to it. But I would okay. say it would it would function the same way as the prime material plane does. That you're you're if you get into fire you burn. If you get into, uh, you know, water you get wet. If you you know get inside, uh, Herbert the pervert you get really poopy all of a sudden. But what if yeah. I don't? What if I want to be the exception to a rule? Hmm. Do we put a line around you then? Well, then you're a superstar girl. Own it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a shining star, man. Who I am. So, what are you guys doing? How do we get the hell? Hell. <laughs> do we just sink straight down? Yeah. Minnow, that, I guess we gotta find out. Should, that was should, that part of the deal was actually water? never discussed. Mm. I mean, I say we go in a circle, hold each other's hands. Um, pla uh, uh, you yeah. could, you could Stop ask heels yeah. together. You could ask Twatter, which is just for everybody at home. It's Twatter is what the characters created as an alternate to a a, a trade, a very highly valued trademark. Don't want to get sued by them. Uh, company that has a little, <laughs> little, little blue bird as a logo. Uh, the ca the characters in the in their campaign call their system of uh, of talking to each other twatter, and everybody has access to it in uh, in all of this fantasy world. Wait a minute, do we still have our communication device with our little buddy that with makes us Barry? The Absolutely. Pahone? Can we ask Barry? Can we well, well, know. Did Herbert? Did, I mean, I guess Herbert we're hard to didn't. Try. The only two people that, unless we explicitly said that the, the Pahones were passed on, the only two people that would have Pahones. Would be our minnow and Pupso and Pupso. Minnow. Yep. Oh, Minnow's got it. I, I and... forgot about the Pahones and didn't put it in the letter. 
<laughs> yep. There, Minnow and Clipso right. are the only two people left in the party that have the uh, pojones, which is a very stupid way of saying phones. They have cell phones. <laughs> we have fantasy <laughs> cell phones in our game. Oh, so I thought they were like pants or something like that. No, no. no. <laughs> there's some there's some fantasy uh, phones that the party was given for communication devices directly with uh, Barry Dingle. Uh, they're uh, hired uh, artificer back in uh, in Fandolin. Because we're cool! Give... Yeah! I'm gonna give Barry a call, you guys. Sure. Barry! Okay. We might need to catch out some of our money that we've got there at Bulls as well. Get you outside. How about that? Um, How about that? <clears throat> uh, Calypso, <laughs> you're making this call, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, you pick up the uh, uh, the pahon uh, and uh, and Go ahead and hit the button that has Barry's uh, uh, face on it. He made this very, uh, very user friendly. It basically has a picture of all of you on each one of the buttons as to you know who it wanted to call, uh, and then basically it would display their face, kind of like a fantasy FaceTime, essentially. Um, so <laughs> hey, you go out ahead. Of game, could we yeah, call please. Herbert and Astrid since they still have their pajones, theoretically? Exactly. They might be out of service. Yeah. As if they've got cell service there <laughs> on another plane. <laughs> Yeah, I figure it out. I suppose you could try. Sorry, that was totally just a <laughs> Herbert. Herbert. Right now, I'm calling Barry. Okay, uh, you go ahead and hit uh, Barry's uh, phone button up uh, or Pahone button, <coughs> and uh, it actually picks up on the first ring. Uh, of all of all things, hey, where the hell have you guys been? We've been everywhere. These things are um, able to get through rock and solid woods and all kinds of like concrete and shit like that. How come you guys weren't answering my calls? I called and I called and I called. You've been gone for like three or four days. I'm Let's sorry. I think my phone is on mute. I didn't hear any ringing. There is no mute. There's no mute function on these things. I, I didn't it. hear it, Barry. I'm sorry. I wasn't ignoring your call. Where have you guys been? We're at Old Owl Well right now. All right. We'll finish I up. Was We'll finish up whatever uh, bullshit you got going listen. on here and, and come home real quick to Fandolin. I need your help with an experiment. Barry, do you want to screw? I, I have a question for you. Oh, yeah, what's up? What's up? Do you know how to get to the Plain of Hell? Oh, yeah, cross the River Styx. Easy peasy. Everybody that? knows that. The River Styx. The, the, the river Styx. It, it's, honey, it's not like a real, like, literal river that I know of. It's it's kind of like a figurative thing. Like, you read the old, like, books and stuff like that. Like, the old, the, the good book, I guess you could say, they, they call it, of uh, that... You know, the river sticks like dead people cross that. They get they so get we across. Yeah, they, if we're they, alive they go, and they... trying to stay alive, how do we get there? I don't know. Yeah, oh, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta you gotta find the boat, man. I'm what am I? I, I I'm not like like I'm not Google. You Herbert can't just be like, hey, hey, Barry. I don't I don't answer my phone, but when I need like Google, like that's really inconvenient for me, don't you think? If what's we need Google? A boat man, go find Herbert. Who who's who's that dragon? Google. Who are those people? Hey, oh, hey Barry. Been through some things. Let me tell you. Herbert shot off into space. We haven't seen him since. We're working with the Dragonborn now. I say that with a little eye roll. Oh. Um, and Astrid left town in the middle of the night. Didn't even say goodbye. She left us some letters, which was nice, but... It didn't say goodbye still. She didn't say goodbye. Um, and now we just met a fairy who is working with us. Hi. Oh. Um... Yeah, we've been through some so, things. It's so, been a wild couple of days. So you and Minnow are Sorry I didn't answer the phone, but we've so, had some things going on. So only you and Minnow are the only ones left, right? Yes. Oh, well that sucks. <laughs> anyway, whenever you guys get a chance, just, you know, be be, be, be quick about it. Get back to Vandalin. I need your help with an experiment. Really cool. Anyway, later. Bye. Click. Ugh, he didn't know hmm. anything. He said something about the river Styx, which isn't a real river, so... That didn't help us that much. All right. I used to throw sticks in a river. Is that good enough? Let's try it. Let's try it. I think we should all go to the nearest river and throw some sticks in and see what happens. Uh, is there a river nearby? Do we do we have a sense of there's water nearby, Dragon? Uh, I I'm would know if sure I passed one. I could roll um, survival. nature survival. Okay. I know if there's a river nearby. Let me. Yeah. Nature's always that one trait that's like I don't know what it is. It's like everyone's dump stat or something. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Nobody it's wants strange. it. Yeah. Um, I like it. Except for them fey critters. <clears throat> I, yeah, I've got I got nature as a proficiency. Oh, I, hey, there you go. I rolled a one, but I have seven with <laughs> my bonus. Oh yeah. Uh, clip. So you would have not the foggiest effing clue where the closest <laughs> body of water is. Uh, you 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 look at the horizon, but you do see all those trees uh, that are now kind of climbing the hill Macbeth style uh, up to the top of Haman Koss's uh, last oh. remaining place here. Um, so yeah, you you don't, you don't have any idea as to where like the closest body of water would be. I, I have uh, a question. Yes. Since since Cricket like 
was a courier here, what are the chances that she would have seen the nearest body of water? I'd say that they were probably it's pretty shortly. good. I mean, as a courier, you kind of have to know the well, lays of the land and how to, you know, get, you know, get through, you know, places. We're looking for something specific, a river, He's not necessarily rivers. a body of water. I, I well, have a bonus to history, though. If, if this is a historical item, I might be able to recall where it's at. Could, so... River is not a historical item. Um, it's a place. <laughs> It it yes, but, location. but what, since I was a courier, would I have a map? Do you have a map in your items, in your inventory? Not in my maybe. inventory, but I was a courier, so, you know, it's one of those things that I didn't really think it through. Um, so <laughs> I'm putting that question out there. What, it, what are the chances of me rolling a map? So are you are you essentially <laughs> begging the DM, like, can yes. I have a map? <laughs> I see Please, that. because I was a courier. I was substantiating it. <laughs> I would say, as a courier in the Prime Material Plane, that you absolutely have a map, but the only reference to the River of Sticks is kind of like in uh, around like the the border when they, you know, they they kind of put in like you know sea monsters into the sea, and they kind of put you know like uh, uh, you know evil demons and stuff like that out at sea or like the edge of the earth. I think we were just or, looking like, a for a, a river in general to throw a stick in, oh, so that oh, okay. we could uh, yeah. see if, <laughs> the, so, or, see no if it's works. funny. In nature or I not? See. I I see. I I'm 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 getting what you're putting down now. Um, so yes, you would. But know the, the, we could also go in one direction and just walk until we can't walk anymore, or ride on somebody's shoulder and I'll braid their hair. <laughs> yeah, braid my hair. Cool. Can you weave in some little flowers along the way? I'll pick some wildflowers and you can weave those into the braid. Yeah. Yay! Yay! And I'm really, really good at like doing eye makeup because of my tiny hands. Ooh! And I'm really good at beadwork. All right, we're gonna work this out. So yes, yeah, so you for... ride on my shoulder and sometimes on my cheekbones. Okay, cool. Okay, so you guys, uh, uh, not Astrid, uh, Cricket, you are able to pull out uh, a map of the area and around uh, Old Owlwell. There is a a small little stream, a little. Uh, um, glacier fed stream uh and we'll say you guys are able to to navigate to it uh, pretty quickly pretty easily uh and we'll say for those who are not visually impaired uh that on the stream here we're drawing that uh little stream in right here with little <laughs> two blue lines um oh so it's not gram drawing no not this time this is the dm doing his best to give you guys a stream on at demand so there there's a stream it's all kinds of squiggly uh and you are on the side of it it's a little uh, uh babbling little stream that's uh, glacier fed it's nice and uh, nice and cool nice and cold i'm gonna take a sip of water just because okay. i'm thirsty it's actually really refreshing uh it's nice and cold so it feels good uh, <laughs> going down your your throat portal uh, as 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 this <laughs> as as you get to kind of like the the uh, the aftertaste of this glacier fed water, it's kind of a little tangy, and you don't know why. <laughs> uh, everybody, go ahead and give me a perception check. Boom, boom, boom. Twenty. Minnow, you totally, uh, and Calypso, you s yeah. now see this out of the corner of your eye as well. Uh, Skidmark, you're like a, you know this is true already because it's coming uh from you this tangy no. it, everyone sees uh Ooh, skid mark uh cricket you don't see anything <laughs> um with you with your nine um but everybody else in the party um clip so as this tanginess aftertaste uh hits your your palate uh you kind of see that this is tanginess is probably coming from the piss from skid mark who is just above where you took the uh, the water from. A uh, skin okay, fucking dragon. Get extra you, mean, you, mean, you mean we could get like tang oh. straight from the source? Oh, yeah, come on. You want to be an astronaut? I don't know what that is as a DM. Tang? <laughs> that sounds like some spell jammer shit. I don't know nothing like about a, that. It's like a powdered <laughs> drink mix that they use in outer space. It's it's orange yeah, juice it. Kool Aid. Urine recycle. It was a real big thing back in the sixties. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Calypso drank a uh, little bit of piss water. Uh, Minnow, you feel a little bit lighter. Or, uh, pardon me, uh, Skidmark, you feel a little bit lighter because you uh, you have less piss in you. Uh, and uh, Minnow, you saw this happen. Uh, M or, uh, uh, Karna, you saw this happen too. Cricket, you're like, eh, it's a cool stream. What are you guys doing? I'll let's, let's start first start throwing sticks in the water and see if it's the way to go. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm not even going to let you roll for this. I'm going to say you throw the stick in the water and it uh, it floats away. You know, <sighs> it, it, it's a river of sticks. 
multiple sticks. I think we need way more sticks than just one. Okay, so maybe we need to find a beaver. Or we could just... <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm looking at a certain druid. Does, uh, does a certain druid have wild shape? Yeah, but, you know, right now I think the only character... Like, I don't know if I've seen a beaver could, recently. Could you could you be a beaver for us? <laughs> I mean, I'll just... Sure. I'll just say... That I saw a beaver on my way up. Followed the oh, river yeah. here and saw a beaver. You have to have seen the animal to turn into one. Yes. It. Yeah. Mm. Well, is there okay. a chance that you, you, you saw one? Well, I mean, I, I would, came a long distance. I would say from your fey like, origins that the beavers are definitely within the repertoire of things yeah. that you have seen that are quite common. And I'm part of the Celestia Conclave. So, like, we're mm -hmm. in nature like, all the fucking time. So, I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna turn into a beaver. Yeah, awesome, awesome. If you could find another beaver for us as well, we could cook it, because I'd love to eat a beaver right now. Oh, God. <laughs> no, thank you. I got the reference. Much thank you, JD. Much appreciated. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I see that there might be a problem with this. Uh, don't druids mm. technically don't like anything mechanical or oh. metal? And the gift in that nature? was left left to me. I would say that from I'm not gonna from, say no to a gift. From a a a narrative uh, perspective and a lore perspective, that that would be an accurate statement. But gifts of of said nature would be acceptable. Uh, okay. But they wouldn't necessarily outright go and you know seek them out necessarily, unless there was like a reason for them. Because they would they would see it as a tool essentially, <laughs> not as like ooh evil. You know, it's like hey, a hammer. Evil. Oh, well, and like it was left. It was part of the deal when I accepted being a courier. That's true as well. Well, I didn't know that at the point, but now that the delivery is complete, I know the full context of said contract. And obviously, she wants Fine. me to use this. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we, you, as, you, as you were? Yeah. So I, I turned mm -hmm. into a beaver. Is it a cute beaver? Yes, but it's tiny because it's like my size. But it has really big anime eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a Disney character. Um, the tiny beaver so, is chewing up wood so it can throw more sticks in the river, making a river I, of sticks. Yeah. Can I just cut down this tree? Oh, does, absolutely. Does anybody have any toothpicks? <laughs> like, would uh, that count? I'd like to cut down the tree. The river of toothpicks instead of the river stick? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say that, Skidmark, you're able to easily uh, go ahead and cut, uh, make giant chunks come out of that tree and uh, and fell the tree across the, the uh, glacier fed stream. All of a sudden, the tree fell down very slowly. That's perfect. <laughs> there you go. So in slow motion. There you go. The DM has produced such dedication. Has produced tree in in game. There we go. Yay! Hey. Can we Snaps essentially cross, DM. Can we cross the river with this tree? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, you yes you it, cross it, the river full of sticks. <coughs> um, yeah. I do want to make it perfectly clear here that this is not the actual river of sticks. And you guys did Aww. not just will this into into existence <laughs> in this fantasy world. It, I was I was gonna accept <laughs> any sort of outcome that you would have given us. Yeah. You guys are interacting. Yeah. You guys oh are God. interacting in a fantasy Dude. setting. This is what would naturally have happened in a fantasy setting. Yeah. <laughs> I um... think we should cross the river of sticks. <laughs> Okay. Let's see what happens. You guys, <laughs> nothing will. Is I'm everybody going? Is everybody go. going across the oh, going across the tree? I would. I I'm on top of. I cross Calypso. Okay, so everybody, uh, uh, everybody that chooses to go across the tree now does, and you are on the opposite side of this uh, small stream. Hmm. I moved okay. us, uh, Calypso. Okay. Well, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Hell, guys. You think it worked, guys? Are we are we there? Uh, no, but we're we're no. in like. A circle. Unless you consider the entire world being hell that we've been living in this entire time. I don't know if this is hell. Well, if this is all not working... Kind of the ring. Uh, if this no. is all, all not working, then, then we have to find somewhere else. Let's okay. go to hell, guys. We Okay, we already established we're trying to get to hell. <laughs> I uh, know, but I just really wanted to say it, okay? <laughs> you won't be mad at me. I'm tiny okay, can we and have delicate. Any, can we have anyone else like do outbursts of like, go to hell? No, <laughs> real quick, please. Can we just get that out of our system? Yeah, everybody. Uh, you can go to hell. Yes, I want to go to hell. I'll see you in hell also. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. <laughs> now, there's one thing that I do I, need to go ahead and do I, a quick uh, housekeeping thing here. Now, Minnow, when yes. you when you made that wish last night, there was that big boom, and uh, an Astrid disappeared uh, about the same exact time as well, uh, just vanished in front of everybody's eyes, just like the um, Death Tyrant did, just vanished, uh, like Marty McFly when he failed to get his parents knocked up. There was a small bulge uh, in your backpack that you noticed immediately uh, after creating that, that wish. So just to let you know, there's uh, there's a extra item in your inventory. I've got a bulge in my pack. You have a bulge. A bulge. Is it a dish? I, I did not notice. I did not Bulgy. notice. Bulge. I just realized I mean, that I'm still technically in beaver form. Yes. <laughs> I already yeah. forgot I'm a beaver. <laughs> well, we haven't changed that. Yeah, we've done. I think it isn't it isn't like a timer thing where like don't I have no, to wait the timer out? I think nope. you could will it. It depends. Okay. It depends yeah. on whatever the spell says. As a wild shape, uh, it's, a, it's a choice thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then yeah. Okay. You're fine. Perfect. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it and go back to fairy size and start braiding okay. Calypso's hair. You're gonna braid her hair? Yeah, because yeah, I'm on top. Braid that? I'm on I'm on top of her head. If you had hair, you could get your hair braided. Yeah, uh, but you're uh, scaly and you had your one hair yanked out. So suck it. <laughs> awesome. So we're on the other side of this river. Um, what do we want to do? We found out it did nothing. Okay, it does nothing. Yep, it does nothing. I'm gonna start walking this way. Okay. Um, Bye, well. Felicia. What we could do is, <laughs> what we could do then, if this isn't working, is we could go back to Barry. He wanted to speak to us, and then yeah, we could. see if we could figure out something. Maybe someone in Fandolin might know. I I would like to meet this Barry. Good idea. He You'll seems like fun. He, he must be <coughs> very a fun. Socially awkward, but he's a nice. Guy. Are we all a little so socially awkward sometimes? I mean, what? we are playing Dungeons and Dragons on a Saturday. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that is true. <laughs> I don't need real life biting me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's what fantasy is for. All right. So, what is what's the party's vote here? What are what are you guys doing? We're gonna go to Barry. Yeah, let's go back to Barry. I, I know the way, don't I? You absolutely do. Absolutely do. Yeah. So this is gonna take you guys about uh, about two days, two and a half days here. So let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Do I know Can of any teleportation circle that is? Um, at Bulls or in Vandalin. Uh There is a transportation circle uh, uh, that was outside of Fandolin uh, as part of the uh, uh, Fae Forest uh, section that you guys made into in a, in a past session uh, that led to um, the, the Cragmaw Castle that was deactivated after you guys right. went through it. At least, you know, it was, it was basically like a one-way transportation type of thing. Right, because there is there is a thing uh, called a teleportation circle, which is a a ten foot diameter circle inscribed with specific sigils. And if you know those sigils, you can cast teleportation circle and jump straight to it. Yeah. So I was just wondering if there was one of those. Oh, nearby. Uh, that we could um, jump. Yeah, jump straight because, to Vandalin and avoid the. Could candle. well, and you could call would... Barry and have him show what those are. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I would if say if there was one. These are, are are basically shortcuts that the Fae put in uh, to go ahead and get to places when they don't want to go ahead and travel through through the woods necessarily. <clears throat> would to, to I have hubs. a general knowledge? I would say that you would probably the be the only one in the party that would have any type of foremost knowledge of okay. of said things. So can I take a guess? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, go ahead and give me a like a history check. Okie dokie. 14. Okay. Uh, I would say that you do actually know of a... Uh, a small summoning circle uh, that's about a day and a half's ride from here. It's actually a further away from Fandolin um, than <laughs> than it is closer to Fandolin. So if, if it's an active portal, uh, you just know its location. You've never necessarily been there before. So it'd be kind of like a, 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 a coin flip of you know if it's there, great. We can we can make arrangements or try to get it to go to you know the closer place by Fandolin. Uh, the alternative being is that it's deactivated. And it would add in an extra, you know, day and a half worth of travel to actually. Would, could one of them? Could one of the people with the pahone call Barry and then he show me because I would be able to read what's there. I don't I'll think, call Barry. I don't think Barry would necessarily know that, to be honest with you, to say whether or not the 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 gate is active. Well, even if it was just because he could just show where the gate is, and I could determine if it's active or 
you know, okay. that stuff because of my knowledge of being a fae. Gotcha. Understood. Yeah. Um. Hey, can somebody call Barry, please? Yeah, I'll call Barry. Who's got the, the pahonies? I, I just will thought I'm gonna call climb, him. I will climb on Calypso's shoulder. <laughs> Ring, so that ring. way, I'm in time too. Ring, ring. Okay. Uh, it, uh, it actually, uh, it, it just keeps on ringing. It gets to about like nine or ten rings, uh, and then picks up. Says, "Yeah, where are you, where are you guys at? Are you guys uh, just out of town, or what's going on?" We're still at Old Owl. We're trying to find a shortcut to get. Back what to is you. taking you guys so long? Oh my God, it's far away. Settle down. Hi. Well, Hi, can, new friend. Can you run faster? You. She had a question for you. Oh yeah. What? Um. So you know the uh, circles for transportation. That, did, can you find the one closest to you and let me see it, please? Oh, a uh, couple hours out of my way to just go there. But, is... but like, do you want us to come back but, or not? Yeah, this will make it easier for us to come back and cut our time in more than half. Are your I feet cut my broken? Toenails faster. Uh, we're over two days away. Ah, uh, all right, all right. Give me a second. Give me a second. Um, thank you. So I'll, we... I'll braid your hair when I get back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so we. Uh, <laughs> he, 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 uh, I look at, um, I look at so clips scary. and say, I like him. Uh, he goes and hangs up. And uh, it take it takes him a good, you know, like six, seven hours. Uh, but uh, it's actually late in the day uh, now at this point here. Um, and he finally gives you a call back. Um, <clears throat> uh, ring, 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 ring. Hello. <laughs> ah, I found it. Found it. Took a while. Took a while. I uh, came across the pigeon. I had to fight it. So I took care of it, though. Uh, yeah, it's still active, actually, here. Uh, I figured out the, the the clues and stuff like that to go ahead and activate. It's actually pretty easy. It's like, hey, shoulders, knees, and toes. You just got to say the four words and sing them real good. Uh, and then it's, it's super crazy. easy. Like, like a child it. could figure this out. It was Nothing. crazy yeah. is there, easy. Is there anything more than just the How long the did words? it take you guys to figure it out? Uh, we just heard of it. We haven't even tried no, it. No, that, well, that's no, what we did, we did got us into... Week. Yeah, we did. Anyway. I know. Is there yeah, action this, that we have to do with the head I'm shoulder? trying not yeah, to tell him it took us a long time to figure out. <laughs> yeah, this one's yeah, it's still active. Yeah, you can still go through it. Okay, thank you. We're gonna thank set you, it up Barry. on this end and go do the loop, loop, zoop, zoop. All right, all right. Okay, Joey. thank you. All right, I'm going back to Fandolin. Bye, Big Barry. Bye. And he uh, okay. he hangs up the the phone. Um, so yeah. Um. I I will do the thing right over here. Cool. Uh, so you guys are able to go ahead and locate this uh, uh this transportation. Uh, stone and it actually has a lot of the same uh, same features um, you see you're able to to go ahead and clear back some some foliage and uh, you see these uh, these icons that you guys saw from from uh, when you guys first encountered uh, right before you guys went to the uh, Cragmaw castle uh, and you're able to go ahead and uh, all get into the into the circle uh, minnow and um, Calypso you're able to go ahead and show everybody else since you guys were the only ones from the party that were there <laughs> um, that mm -hmm. um, uh, how to do the head, shoulders, knees, and toes dance with all the words, uh, and you guys are transported uh, back to um, that area. Oh, I, thought gonna, hey. I thought we were going to sing it IRL. We did after last time. Yeah, I yeah I did make the party do it. Do you guys want me to do it again? I can make you hold hands. No. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> MT MT wants to sing like really bad. <laughs> like it does. I'll even do the dance. All right, MT, give us give us the rendition. How did how did you sing? How good did you do? Oh no! Sing for the group. Put me on the spot. <laughs> Do it. Um, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes. Is that is that it? Is that the whole? I would I would yeah. say I would say with that. Head, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Knees and toes eyes and ears and mouth and nose. I've never heard of the rest head, of it. Knees and toes. What? I would say. I've only Goodness. known the head, shoulders, knees, and toes, and that's it. I don't remember the rest of it. They don't teach that to yeah, you. Yeah, and Alaska. eyes and ears and mouth and nose. You know what? I know it was you guys, come up to that. you guys are lucky I didn't make you make your, like a performance check because I would say in that in that transportation circle, I would say MT would be the one that was left in the circle. <laughs> <laughs> it would wow. be active, so I could okay. go back and get him you know, and bring <laughs> him back. I would blame the people that try to teach me the the <laughs> dance because I did a poor job learning, apparently. Apparently, so mm. so you guys are able to get back to that teleportation circle. Barry is nowhere to be found because he's back in Fandolin, uh, and so you guys are able to make your way back over to Fandolin. Give me a second here. You guys are able to to make your way back to um to the main road and make your way back into. Uh, into Fandolin here, and at this at this point here, you guys are, are normally used to coming to this town and seeing weird shit happen, but this time something definitely weird shit happened. You actually see this uh, a giant with this uh, weird looking staff uh, just standing next to the uh, miners' exchange as you come into town. Oh. 
And he's just sitting there, much just minding his own business, just kind of just duh, looking at uh, at nothing. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, hit him with my sword. You're just gonna up and Why? Just go up to him and whack him. <laughs> it looks pretty big for a miner. Can yeah, I roll he... intercept Skidmap's <clears throat> sword with my own yeah. and try and stop him? If he looks out of place, you can try to uh, grapple him. I would assume. I don't trust him. How do I? What do I need to roll? What do I need to do to grapple him? Uh, I would. I believe that is a uh, dexterity strength. versus strength check. So he would be so doing. So I do dexterity. A, he, he does strength. Nope. Other way around. You would do strength. He would do dexterity. Yeah. He's trying to. He's trying to avoid you. I will. I will allow you to, to, to do him. that. So, Graham, I want you to go ahead and make any, a a dexterity uh, check for me, if you would please, to avoid being grappled. And Connie, I would like you to go ahead and make a strength check to be able to grapple Skidmark to prevent him from hitting this giant. Yeah, 12. Okay, got a 12. And Skidmark, waiting for that to load here. A4. <laughs> so, <Yes>! Skid, <laughs> Skid, <laughs> um, Skidmark, uh, you are, right as you're getting ready to, to go ahead and swing, you don't see Connie, or you don't see a clip so coming out of the out of the side of your out of your eye there, and she just tackles the shit out of you. Like Bobby <laughs> Bobby Boucher in the fucking water boy. Like, mm, Gatorade's better, water is better. Gatorade, water is much better. High school's the devil. Um, well, so if, the, if I can't hit him with my sword, then I want to poke him in the toe. Well, you are sword. you are currently grappled approximately ten feet from from this giant's feet, and he just kind of looks at you and just kind of looks off as you just got tackled to the ground, and you are now uh, currently uh, grappled on the ground. Uh, I'm gonna blow air towards his feet, then I'm gonna go. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, he takes no notice. He just kind of looks off into the I, into the distance. I again. spit in its general direction. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a try. <laughs> um, so if he's a if he's a giant, uh, I'm going to ask him uh, who he is and what he's doing there, uh, and I shall speak in giant. Oh wow! Um, I'm going to assume that the uh, that language kind of sounds like you know big and bulky. <laughs> And you just you just hear this come out of Minnow just blah, 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 and uh, the you the giant like he's he's kind of jarred like somebody's somebody's actually talking to me in my language and uh, and he immediately you know, looks over and kind of waves his hand at you and goes blah, 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 blah. and uh, Minnow uh, you would hear this of uh, hi I'm uh, uh, my name is Richard and um, I'm on. Uh, <laughs> I'm here to, uh, just doing uh, just doing some work for. Uh, uh, Your name is Dick. It, d- a giant dick? No, no, yeah, big dick. No. Oh, you're a big no, dick. Yeah, I'm gonna call him. Bi- no, I'm gonna call, I'll call him Big Dick from now on. Oh, okay. Big so, Dick. He basically responds back, "Hey, I'm, I'm just doing some work for for this guy. I'm on. I'm just kind of on loan at the moment. I'll, I'll go home when I'm when he's when he tells me I'm he's done with his project. I'm." I'm I'm like uh just like excavating some stuff for him. Cool, cool. Oh, is what, yeah, what's, you're town? what's uh, uh what's your name? People. My name is Minnow. So the only word that people actually get from this conversation, if they're listening in, is, is the word Minnow. Yeah, it, yeah it, right. it, it, he's basically just sitting there. Blah, 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 right. Minnow. Blah, 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 blah. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna, you know, yes. can you Richard. ask him for me how many people he's killed? I wanna know how many people this thing's killed. The thing, excuse you, is a being. <laughs> Oh, he no, might speak common. Yeah, he might. He might speak common. Who knows? But I'm being polite. What did you you ask? Is there something any reaction? Is there, an, is there any reaction when these people there's, are speaking common? There's no reaction whatsoever. He, he did. They he, they're just just talking in, in their language. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, Minnow, it's great talking with you, man. Uh, maybe we just you know we haven't seen one of your when your kind here for a long time. How how you guys holding up? You know, species wise. You guys going to Pound uh, Town or you guys on the verge of like extinction? How's how's that thing going? Going to Pound Town. Mm, yeah, uh, a bit of both. I certainly fancy a bit of Pound Town. Um, but uh, uh, my clan was uh, extinguished. I'm the only survivor. But maybe there are others. Uh, the rest of the party is you guys just hear blah, 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 Pound Town. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, 
uh, he, uh, tra- oh. he he just he responds back to you, Minnow, basically saying, "Yeah, that that sucks, dude. That that's terrible. That's terrible. I'm sorry to yeah. hear that about you. But uh, well, yeah, it's good talking with you, man. It's, uh, well, we'll see you around, I guess. Yeah, yeah we'll do beer sometime. As this happens, the rest of the party just kind of hears a Heineken. And hey, Minnow, can I braid your hair? Of course, always. Oh yeah. But um, I turn, I turn to Skidmark and say, uh, you want to know how many people he's killed? Well, thousands that deserved it, but it's quite peaceable if, you, if you're if you nice to him, he's nice to you. Otherwise, he says he'll rip you open like a Heineken can. Aww. I like Heineken. <laughs> well, i got to make it fit because he said the word that you understood. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I love this Mad Lib, by the way. Minnow, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Minnow, yeah. go ahead and take inspiration for me, actually, if you would please. That was that was brilliant. Thank you, sir. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> Skidmark, you're still on the ground underneath uh, Calypso, who has gone ahead and tackled you, and you just got this response from uh, from Minnow. What do you do? Oh, pile. I'm going to push Calypso off of me. Uh, go ahead and give me both Very of you, what? Calypso and uh, uh, Skidmark, go ahead and give me uh, competing uh, stealth rolls, if you would please. Stealth? Oh, strength. <laughs> stealth? Or, strength? St- stealth. Uh, strength. Strength, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you got to contest the grapple every time you want to get One. out of it. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Skidmark? Connie, uh, Calypso just rat, uh, rolled a one. Please tell oh, so me. it should be an instant. As long as, as long as you don't roll a one, you know. Yeah. I, I, I would imagine you know you roll a one and it, you, you just kind of just you guys are just kind of like writhing back and forth, wiggling, not really making an attempt at anything. <laughs> um, Skidmark with <laughs> holy shit, Skidmark with yeah. a fifteen. Uh, Ca- uh, Calypso actually goes flying off, and uh, you are able to um, to not be grappled anymore. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to stick this giant in the toe with my sword. Okay. Uh go ahead and make me uh go ahead and make me an attack. All right. He's going to kill you. <laughs> All the new character. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I made friends with him. I'm going to be on his side. Usher sure a paladin. I don't like paladins. Uh-oh. It's going down. <laughs> I got to have a look at what spells I can do. Oh, come on. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, Skidmark, that is definitely not going to. Uh, that's not going to hit this uh, this giant. Uh, however, he does notice the attempt at uh, swinging at his person, and you just hear this. Uh, Minnow, you hear. Hey, what are you doing? Fuck is wrong with you? Uh, as he uh, he winds up uh, to go ahead and take a swing at you. What's up, man? Uh, at this point <laughs> here, <laughs> Graham, <laughs> Graham uh, uh, you are still on the ground at this point here, uh, mm-hmm. which means that you are still in the prone position, which means this hit is going to be a guaranteed success with his uh, uh, his great club. Sweet. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Wait, so isn't, I, it, isn't it critical as well? I can't, I can't remember. No, he needs to be unconscious mm-hmm. for that. Yep. Yeah, unconscious for that one, yeah. <laughs> but this is, this is going to be like he this is a guaranteed hit. Sounds like it's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just so I'm clear, he's just bite me on the head or something, right? He's just like he's yeah. That doesn't sound like a bop on the head. <laughs> looking at his his current weapon uh, that he has in his hand, uh, this is going to hurt uh, a lot, uh, unfortunately. Here, because this is kind of like a big, uh, great, uh, great club uh, that he's using. This essentially, this uh, it's modified, so there's a, a sharp tip. Uh, on it, um, uh, I would say if anybody's uh, perception, uh, passive perception, is uh, over a ten, they would identify this as a great club that's been modified as a uh, as a giant shovel uh, that has a sharp edge on it. <clears throat> um, I, I mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Skidmark, I need you to go ahead and take thirty six points of bludgeoning damage, if you would please. Oh, oh that's it. <laughs> Are you down? Right. No. Okay. okay, and that will be the giant's first attack. Okay, uh, <laughs> I need you to, uh, he takes another swing at you, uh, and that will oh, be. Oh God! Who knew it was a fighter or a fighting? Uh, class. And I need you to go ahead and on the second attack, you'll take twenty-eight bludgeoning damage. You're down. You're definitely down okay. at this point. No, I'm not down yet. How much HP do you? How have? much damage? Okay. Twenty-eight. Um, the yeah, mm-hmm. on the second one, twenty-eight. Yep. All right. And the third. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. On his third attack. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm kidding. I'm having what? fun. He's, he's only got he's only got multi attack. I'm kidding. I'm only having fun. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Hell, I'd have had three attacks if I was doing it. If I was the right. 
Um, yeah. uh, is, I have to. I have to ask this question: Is the rest of the party engaged at this point here? Are no. they making any way, shape, or form any type of initiative? Let's put it that way. Is anybody joining? Okay, yeah. I am you, actually you... standing back to make it clear <laughs> that I am not involved in this. I tried to prevent this, and I. <laughs> You know, that you know that scene from his own bad choices. I yeah. found some popcorn. Yes, this, <laughs> this is it. You know, you know that you know I'm... that scene in Too Fast, Too Furious where um, Paul Walker and Tyrese uh, they start fighting in the dirt, and uh, the Agent Bilkins, the the black guy, he just sits down and starts eating a pack of chips, and he's like, "Hey, I ain't in it." <laughs> <laughs> so Skidmark, what are you doing? Are you continuing? No, I'm gonna sheathe my weapon and. Uh... Just put my hands up and uh, tell, ask. I'm going to ask Minnow if he can uh, say in Beast. I was just trying to clean his nails for him. Beast? It was, uh, it was, uh, tell, tell Minnow in Giant Talk. Giant Talk. Graham? That, hold on. Yeah? Whatever you're about to tell Minnow, I need you to do in exactly six seconds before this mm-hmm. thing is going to take another swing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> tell him I, it was an accident. I, I only wanted to clean his toes. That's it. Okay. Minnow, that's what you got in about six seconds. What do you do? <laughs> I accidentally wanted to clean your toes with my sword. I'm sorry. <laughs> he says you fight with honor and you are a worthy friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that could, that could de-escalate things, I, I believe. That that sounds like de- de-escalating. He says... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Minnow, you hear, he could have just fucking asked. Jesus Christ, what the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> My response back is, yeah, he's a dick sometimes. He's our dick. I, is, is, honest, <laughs> honestly, Minnow, you're the best thing next to a friend I have at this point here. Do you, do, should, should, is this guy worth it? You know, should I just keep on swinging, just pound him into the dirt? We'll just bury this, be done with it. Or is this guy actually, you guys still need him? Is he, is he, he's not your slave, is he? Well, he's not my bitch, but time can, time may tell. I need to, to make a quick behind-the-scenes roll <laughs> yeah. here. This giant is, inc- you see from his body language that he's incredibly hesitant as he kind of winds up to go ahead and, you know, pound uh, Graham again in the, in the <laughs> face. As he kind of like, all right. As he he puts down uh, he puts down his weapon and kind of starts, uh, you know, tending to his, uh, to his, 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 not wound. <laughs> he didn't even hit him, did he? No, he didn't. No, no. It's at this point here uh, that uh, you hear a dwarf uh, come out of the uh, out of the miners' exchange, and uh, all in a huff and a puff, and he, he like t- like his uh, shirt pocket is kind of torn open because it got caught on the on the doorknob on the way. And I was, what are you doing? Don't get away! Get away from my uh, my my giant! He's he's my excavation equipment. What the fuck is wrong with you? I was trying to clean his nails. He, that's no Holy fucking cow. excuse. You could have just said. Please? Uh, My you... excavation equipment. You, this... These people are so insensitive to this giant. <laughs> yeah. Minnow, Everyone. And... <laughs> Minnow and uh, Calypso, you recognize this dwarf individual as Gundren Rockseeker oh, the whole... there. Yeah, Gundren. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Gundren, you see this Gundren Rockseeker come out here and say, hey, what the fuck is wrong with you? You could have just said, please, let me clean out your toes. Um, the, uh, it's at this point here, Gundren turns to the to the, the giant and goes, blah, blah, blah. And the the, uh, the goblin responds, and they just kind of go back and forth here. Mino, what you're seeing here is that they're kind of going back and forth. Like, you know, he could have asked, like, hey, I told him he could have just asked me. He's a real dick, you know, not real cool. <laughs> I got a job to do and I got family to feed. This guy's got to be a real douchebag. Um, so this is what that's what you kind of see behind the the, the, the scenes here. Mino says, oh, you, yep. you, you guys have, have really been, uh, you know, just... Uh, all kinds of rude and stuff like that here. Calypso, Calypso, and uh, Minnow, come over here, please. I, uh, 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 we, I, I still need some some assistance here. Uh, whenever you get a chance here, we're going to be heading over to to that place of new nowhere um, to uh, to go ahead and, uh, and uncover, uh, dig a hole for a pool. And he, he goes, uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You would know this. He's kind of like trying to be coy and not... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, basically give away any type of locations uh you would know this to be he's basically uh, uh after the lost mine of fendelver uh he's this he's using this um giant as uh the excavation equipment to go ahead and do the, all the heavy lifting big digging uh and he wants to be very coy about it so that nobody else hears like uh lanar uh who is actually just kind of watching all this go down you know the entire time just not really saying anything um so yeah gundren yeah. rockseeker says yeah yeah whenever i get uh get a chance uh meet me at that uh Yes, uh, come come and find me. Yeah, you, you got my number and whatnot. You can you can tweet me or or twat me. What? <laughs> <laughs> I can do what to you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, you got the water, you got the all I'm kinds the of stuff. Uh, everybody make me a perception yep. check right now. Uh, is this to, is okay. this to perceive that he's changed from Scottish to Russian to Scottish to Russian? <laughs> Yes. There's, yeah. there's, 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 there's a lot of character stats and a lot of things that have happened <laughs> in this session. And accents are this, hard. <laughs> accents are very hard, okay. and voices are very hard to keep keep to you. But it ex did it mid sentence. It's amazing. Ex especially <laughs> too. Especially if the, the characters only appeared like one or two other times in the entire campaign. Uh, I can't <laughs> remember what he was like before, but yeah, oh, okay. the, he's changed four times today. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's in the extenuating circumstances. He's got some things going on today too. You know? gotcha. He's a little flustered. <laughs> um, so let's see here, Clipso, uh, with your perception of twenty-four. That's awesome. Uh, Skidmark, you are oblivious. Cricket, uh, you guys also mm. notice here a a lot of bird poop on the ground, just everywhere, just kind of everywhere. Not to the point where it's like disgusting, but like, hey, that's a lot of bird shit. A lot of people have been talking. Birds that live around here. PayPal birds. Out have, of game, birds. how long have we been? How long have we been away? Uh, you guys have been uh, away for two weeks, three weeks, something along those lines. When it comes to like travel time and how long you guys were in that dungeon before this session happened. Mm. Let, yeah. Let's blame, let's blame bird people. Sounds fair. Um, Gundren, uh, was are you guys? doing anything at this point before I say something? I know. What Do you want some flowers <laughs> in your hair? Or do you um, want beads? Ooh, well, flowers don't really last, do they? No. That would mean the whole thing needs doing again, so... Uh, yeah. We, well, yeah, I'm happy to do your hair. It's fine. Yeah, flowers and flowers are better. Okay, you got it, mister. Okay. Okay, I'm done. Uh, Gundren, cool. <clears throat> Gundren turns and says, well, yeah, guys, you got... Uh, you guys got, you know, you guys get me. You guys, you know what I'm, what I'm laying down here. I'm just gonna talk in a regular voice because this Scottish thing and going to Russian is really too hard. Um, <laughs> <coughs> uh, you guys, you guys, you guys know my number. Uh, you guys can reach out to me on the twatter. Uh, just, uh, just reach out and uh, we'll, we'll take care of things. You, you know what I mean. The, the, the place at the deal, right? Uh, and he goes, and he, uh, uh, he turns to the, uh, to the giant, and goes, ra 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 ra. Come on, let's go. Um, and they uh, they both go ahead. They start uh, walking away out of uh, out of Fandlin. So you guys uh, are moving on, or what are you guys doing? Are we still looking for Barry? Let's go see Barry. So you guys continue uh, walking through uh, through the town here, passing through all the different uh, places. Everybody's really friendly, you know, waving hi to you. Uh, you guys continue to notice, you know, patches of uh, bird poop and stuff like that. Uh, you notice a lot of bird poop uh, from. Uh, uh, kind of around uh, the Thunder, Far uh, Thunder Force uh, guild, and uh, that may or may not raise anybody's attention. Uh, so yeah, you guys uh, go ahead and walk up to uh, to Barry. Uh, he's actually uh, turned around so he doesn't see you uh, necessarily right away. He's actually tightening some bolts on his uh, giant uh, mechanist, uh, uh, this giant mechanist device. You would recognize it from uh, this uh, perspective or this direction as being that giant, uh, that giant device that he was uh, kind of peppering the town with that uh, uh, that smoke that de uh, that basically cleaned uh, the town of the of the the infectious <laughs> fey magic. That he was afraid of. Uh, this is the same. Uh, oh the same, no! This is the same uh, same device, but it's uh, it's been modified uh, significantly. It's it, basically it's a whole new it's a whole new thing. He's repurposed it entirely. You hear him, you know, the, the, as you walk up, you hear the the ratchet click 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 click, and he's as he's tightening a, a bolt down. I just realized, what if Barry doesn't like me? Are you saying this he in will. game or in the yeah. party? Yeah, well, both because I'm a fairy. Oh. I did not put that together. Stay in my pocket. He doesn't necessarily have to meet you right away. Well, I mean, he saw me. He has a very particular personality. He might have looked right at you and not realized who and what you are. What if, he what if I braid his hair? At a time. What if I braid his hair? He might appreciate that. He's very, very afraid of fairy magic, though. So maybe if you... If I don't, don't do a lot of magic. I don't think you he don't... can solve every yeah. problem with braiding someone's hair. Uh, hello? Oh, have you met me? I'm... I'm... Beautiful. No, I haven't I, met you. We just met like a couple hours ago. It's at this. It's at this point that have I braided their hair. It's at this point that Barry actually uh, is kind of jolted and uh, and disturbed. He actually turns around from with all this uh, kind of back and forth uh, going behind you. He turns around and says, "Oh, there you guys are. Um, oh, perfect. Oh, oh, and you brought some brains along here. A oh, fellow gnome, come on over." And he gestures to you, um, uh, Cricket. Oh, fellow gnome, come on over. Yeah, you're kind of short for a gnome. Anyway. Uh, yeah, this is an experiment. 
Uh, we're doing some. Uh, this is my new new invention. Uh, we had you guys actually kind of inspired it a little bit. Although I had some I had some uh, some some inklings of my own. Uh, long 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 time thing. This is uh, I'm gonna consider this my my Magnus Opa. This is the best thing I've ever made. Um um. And he says, here here come with me. It's all remote controlled. You guys ready? You you ready, Charles? And you uh, uh he he hits the side of the of this uh, steel uh steel contraption with a uh, uh, with a hammer. You hear this pong pong on the side of this uh, steel uh, steel siding. And then you hear this tink tink as like a, as a signal back. Uh, you would assume that this is Charles Jr.'s on the inside of this thing. He says, Barry, Barry, uh, Barry says, yeah, come here, come here, walk with me, walk with me. And he starts walking past you here. Um, <clears throat> um, um, I'm in your hair, I'm sorry. Karna and uh, Skidmark, um, I want you to go ahead and make me a dexterity saving throw okay. as Barry pushes past both of you as he walks through uh, the party. Uh, 23. Okay. Uh, Minnow, you are able to... Oh, no, that's your perception check here. Skidmark is waiting for uh, waiting for it to load. There we go. 18. Alrighty. And uh, M- MT, what did you have? Or, uh, pardon me, Karna? 23, I rolled. Okay. Uh, so you guys are able to to go ahead and uh, dodge Barry uh, as he just pushes past you guys there, and he starts walking. He says, "Don't dilly dally, come with me quickly." Uh, and uh, you guys are, I assume, are following Barry, right? Yeah. We, have no, okay. we don't have any reason not to. Barry is looking, uh, is walking <laughs> towards the Shrine of Luck, and uh, it's everybody is following. Con- per- confirmed? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. He says, "Here, perfect. Stand right here. This should, uh, this should Bob do it." And he says, "Here." Do your best to stand on the on the on the red X. That's the best spot. That's like a front row seat. Okay. What exactly is going to happen here, Barry? This is my Magnus Opa. It's the greatest thing ever. It is a Fey generator. See, the what? thing is, you guys, you guys, when you came out of the forest, it was a long time, a long time that you guys, you know, like disappeared for. But you guys went through the Fey forest, so I figured, like, hey, what if that mm-hmm. could be like something that we could make? That'd be cool. That'd be super cool. So I, I, it, it it generates that same fey fey force, but it's really intensive on energy. Oh my god! It took it took weeks to go ahead and put this together. It was crazy. The the materials are so incredibly rare. Oh, it's so cool though. Here, here, here. this is a. Uh, here, here, stand here. And he uh, pulls out uh, uh, a little, a uh, a small little uh, receiver has a small little makeshift uh, antenna on it. Here, here, check this out. Check this out. As soon as this here, as soon as this uh, hits uh, uh, hits 88 dingles per hour, you guys are gonna see some <laughs> real shit. And uh, he hits this giant uh, 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 novelty button as you uh, as you hear this uh, this giant whistle go. Woo, woo, almost like it comes from a train. As this um, as this contraption. Uh, this new machine that he has uh, built starts barreling like like zero to sixty and like nothing. Like this thing is already at speed uh, as it's hit as it's uh, coming down here. Um, uh, Barry, uh, mur- it's, at, it's at this point here. Barry kind of murmurs something uh, underneath his breath. Um, go ahead and give me a perception check, if you would please. I got a five. Okay, twenty-three. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Cricket, you don't notice that you're not able to move. Uh, Calypso, you are able. Uh, you are seeing this uh, contraption um, barreling towards you, and you you try to just like, hey, this this. This isn't all like all that great. Like this thing's gonna hit us if it keeps on going. And uh, but you find yourself that you're not able to uh, to move. Um, uh, Skidmark, you are also uh, you also notice that you are not able to move as well out of the weight of this thing that's barreling towards you. And so let's see. Barry, Cri- we've talked about this. I don't like being Cricket, crashed into. Clipso, Skidmark, uh, Minnow, are you making any effort to perception? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, you, you can't help but perce- try and perceive things. <laughs> He covered his ears and closed his eyes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The brace for impact. Uh, Minnow with a 17, you also notice uh, that you are not able to, to move. So you guys uh, that rolled uh, below that number here are not able to basically move out of your step. He says, hold steady. Uh, as, uh, as Barry starts to, to shout louder and louder as it gets closer. Steady. Steady. Uh, it's at which point uh, this thing is actually literally three or four feet away from you guys here, at which point you see this giant green flash behind this device happen. And it, it's incredibly blinding because it, it's it was evening time, but now it's day. But it's like there's a green sun behind this thing. As, as this giant flash happens, something happens. And there's a big boom sound. <clears throat> and as there's this big boom sound here, this contraption disappears 
in front of you, and fire falls upon the bottoms of everyone's feet in the direction of the Shrine of Luck. So have everybody oh, go cool. ahead and load back in. Whoa. I'm just rolling, zooming in. It's at this point here that there's fire underneath everyone's feet here as you guys uh, all uh, at this exact same time, as soon as this uh, these two flames shoot uh, in the direction of the Shrine of Luck on the on the ground here, very reminiscent of a, of a trademarked uh, franchise that uh, we don't want to get sued by. Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> if anybody's getting what I'm what I'm putting down, um, it's at this point here you guys are are then released of your of your feet uh, being um, mm. basically being stuck uh, to the ground. Uh, at which point you guys hear this beep beep uh, from a a, a small. Uh, stationed wagon uh, right next to you guys there uh, that uh, has like a little mechanical timer that Barry has set up ahead of time uh, that then starts to begin counting down from uh, from one minute. <clears throat> uh, Barry yells out, Oh my god, do you guys believe it? That's so cool! And you know, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? There was only a 9% chance that that would have actually done that! Can you believe it? That's amazing! Wow, Barry, it seems that we are back from the futon. <laughs> <laughs> ten out of ten. So what do you guys think? I love it. It's, it's beautiful. I got. I made, made my own. Uh, I made my own uh, different. Uh, as long as it goes to 88, 88 dingles per hour, I named it after myself because it's a unit. It's a unit of speed. I invented it myself. It's amazing. Oh. So cool. Uh, what does it do? Like barbecues? This Here, is fun. You, you guys are gonna need to move for this. And he, uh, he pushes everybody out of the way with a thunderclap as um, as the timer goes off. Um, Barry uh, hits a button. On his uh, on his jacket, that uh, essentially um, pulls out uh, a uh, a Pez dispenser, like the head uh, e uh, ejects. I almost said ejaculated, um, but the the Pez dispenser basically <laughs> opens up on his on his belt, and these uh, 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 let's see one two three four uh, five uh, little pills uh, come out almost as if uh, via like a like a pressurized rocket, and uh, basically hits each one of you. Um, it doesn't doesn't hurt. It just pushes uh, pushes everybody to the left and to the right of um, of the path. Essentially, uh, you guys are uh, go ahead and give me a dexterity saving throw uh, to be uh, avoid being knocked prone. Fourteen. Seven. Okay. Empty. You're good. Uh, yeah. I'm not. Karna. <laughs> yeah. Pardon me, Karna. I'll get your name right. I promise. <laughs> it just takes time. I rolled an eleven, but I have advantage over being knocked prone. Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm going to roll again. Okay, Just so everybody knows why I'm rolling twice. Okay. Thanks, Clipso. Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting us know. 26. Oh, yeah. You say, um, I, you say I was in the way? Or, or yeah, yeah. Every, okay. Everybody needs to, to go ahead and roll. Uh, okay. Or everyone gets low rolls. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. We're all uh, dead. New campaign. <laughs> Calypso, right? No kidding. Um, see here. Calypso and... Let's see here. Calypso... It, oh, yeah. That's right. Calypso rolled twice. Goodness. I was like, wait a second. She rolled twice. You just told me. Um... Skidmark, um, you are uh, pushed to the ground, uh, uh, and you are kind of you know facing uh, facing down. Uh, Calypso, uh, you are fine. You're able to uh, move out of the way uh, in time, and are, are able to go ahead and use uh, one of these pills to um, move to the uh, either side of the of the road here. Uh, Minnow, you're not so not so good on this. It's you're you're knocked prone. You're actually down on your hands and knees. This is actually kind of a weird state to be in, considering that you nobody knocks down Minnow. You're on the ground. Mm. So uh, it's at this point here. Uh, there's that giant green flash again as the this device reappears again after that timer uh, started to to beep. Uh, at which point it originates where you guys last saw it disappear. <clears throat> um, it's then at this point that you hear um, what sounds to be a door swinging open and uh, kind of a louder version of that uh, a louder version of those pills going off like a like an actual rocket like a pfft, as you hear screeching tires on the ground as uh, as you guys see this device uh, and it's uh, it's cargo that it was hauling with this great green flash. Uh, you see the, the fire, uh, basically, uh, kind of, um, do this thing where it's like, uh, uh, blown all at the, at the same time, almost as if like a, there's a concussive force as this green light, uh, flashes again and bl almost blinds you guys here as you see it skidding down the, down the road here. And it actually hits the shrine of luck at the end of the street here completely destroying it ass over tea kettle everything whatsoever coming apart at the seams and you guys are, are able to uh essentially those who were not knocked prone got to see this carnage 
uh, occur with all these parts and pieces going everywhere. Like thing is, things are on fire, uh, and you guys who did not get knocked prone also see Darren Edermith standing there next to the wreckage with this green glowing orbish thing next to him. Seeing all this, his eyes are wide agape, and he turns very sharply and gives the death stare. To Barry. Barry, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Barry, you said you wouldn't be pulling the, you said it was gonna be safe. This thing Barry, you said this thing was radioactive. Are we good? And uh Barry's just kind of like fiddling with the with the uh, like a fire extinguisher trying to put out the fire. He says, Oh no, that's no, perfectly fine. No, no, it's when it when it uses up the power, it's no longer radioactive. It's perfectly fine. Uh he uh he turns to turns to you guys, he's, he's like, Hey guys, this is that that shit's like really radioactive. We better get that off the road. There's like somebody's gonna grow an extra <laughs> wing if we don't get that like says, Here, take these, you're gonna need these. Uh, he takes another uh, Pez dispenser off the other side of his belt and uh, hands you a hands you a pill and uh, has a little tiny clip on it. Uh, he says, "Here, put these on your belt. Hit the button." What do you guys do? Um, I'm guessing I would just follow the instructions that I was given. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Just like, All right. What? Yeah. Uh, Karna, you, with with everything happening, you go ahead and hit that button, and there's a <laughs> unfurling of this giant. Um, uh, like balloon material from your from your belt that just kind of encases you and envelops you uh, entirely, and uh, it's kind of jarring at first, almost like you're on the inside of a bouncy house. That then this bouncy house then kind of resizes to your to your shape, and you're actually looking through what looks to be some type of some type of suit that you're now wearing that's made of this plasticky type of material that is some type of uh, contaminants uh, suit that you've you've never kind of seen something like this so complex before like normally like there's like uh, somebody who comes around with like a bird mask on and like rubs some incense and stuff like that but like this is like some high tech shit you've never seen this before karna okay then what 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 comes from me being in this nice uh place? this this suit protects you from outside elements of this type which would be uh radiation or, uh, or or what you would what you would perceive as a green green glowing device no 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 the thing is <laughs> what, didn't we talk about radiation and how it's not going to affect because it's all used up why am i in a radiation protection suit it's just like the thing that um that Barry had us in originally like um, when you the decontamination with the churro and the butt dog yep exactly yep you guys recognize these uh, at least uh, Calypso and Minnow does, anyway. This wouldn't um, affect me though, because I'm a fairy, right? No, it won't. It won't necessarily affect you in any way, shape, or form. You're still the same person that you are, in any way, shape, or Yay! form. Yay! I'm amazing. Okay. So does everybody else? Uh, everybody else basically sees this happen to Karna. Do you guys also then hit your buttons? Yep. Okay. I yeah. should probably hit Definitely. the button. So yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so you guys all hit your hit your buttons there, and you hear this, you know, uh, simultaneous <laughs> as all these like bouncy houses kind of erupt from this little tiny little packet pill that has the little button on it. As you guys are then enveloped with these bouncy houses that kind of push you awkwardly aside because they're like way oversized, like very kind of like a one size fits all type of mindset here, and uh, and it shrinks down to your guys' individual size. It actually fits really well. It's really well over your guys' armor and everything. He says, here, leave. There, come this way here. Uh, Min Minnow, uh, grab, grab this side. Here, I'll grab this side. And then uh, Calypso, you, you grab this side. And uh, here, let's move it. Let's move it to the edge of town. We just gotta, you gotta hurry. Whatever you do, just hurry. Just hurry. Just hurry. Okay. Okay. And uh, do you guys follow the lead? Yeah. Yes. Okay. As you guys go ahead and move it uh, closer to the uh, to the edge of the uh, of uh, of the forest here, you kind of see the uh, the green glow kind of start to fade a little bit. Um, as you guys go ahead and uh, take it over to the the edge of town, he says, "Here, here, middle, grab this, and take this." And he uh, he hands you like a, a two two shovels. He says, "Here, let's dig a hole. We gotta bury this." And uh, <laughs> as you guys start to to go ahead and dig. Uh, uh, Barry's goes on to kind of start explaining about like how how this is, is uh, again this is his magnum opa um, as this uh, this basically uh, what you guys just witnessed is effectively a rudimentary prototype that Barry just created of inventing what he calls time travel essentially uh, where you guys saw hmm. uh, all this uh, take place here it's at this point here at the same time uh, that you see a parachute um, off. Uh, in the uh, where you guys just came from, that's uh, that's coming down. You guys finish burying this device uh, in the dirt. He says, "Don't tell anybody we buried this here. Don't ever come back to this thing. This, 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 this. Don't we just we just don't talk about this. Just don't talk about it. Just don't talk about it." What about the shrine of luck? I mean, you had, you you kind of destroyed it. You could say it was a stroke of luck, but probably uh, not. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, I see what you did there. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, as he kind of uh, giggles at you, uh, Minnow, there. You did that um, way too well. Um, it's at this point here, he, he kind of hits the ground with that little uh, uh, little spade shovel as he starts walking back to Chitani. He says, I'm sure I'm sure the Shrine of Luck will be fine here. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll assign the dog to, to fix it here. It'll be fine. Uh, as you see him kind of walk towards uh, Darren uh, Edermyth, just to kind of explain, like, hey, everything's perfectly fine. It's perfectly safe. You know, uh, Darren is, you know, it's perfectly fine. You know, nothing, nothing to see here. It's perfectly fine. Uh, trying, trying to luck, I'll, I'll get the, I'll get the dog to replace it. I'll just ro- load up some, uh, some, uh, some uh, masonry uh, subroutines. We'll be fine. He'll, he'll build it up. It'll be, you, you won't even notice. You won't even notice it's gone. Uh, Darren replies back, basically saying, you know, hey, this is, this is, uh, this is better be the last time. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, this is, this is getting out of hand. We've, we, we've, we've had pets going missing. We think you had something to do with it. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> this thing, things are happening, Barry, and we, we need you to stop these experiments because this is, this is really inconvenient as all of this, this, this. But invention is ingenuity. Like, this, this, this is what will make and set this town apart. Giant green flashes like did like yeah. this, like at, at the at, in where the, i in come the, from that's totally normal what's where do you, you come from? from anyways magical land of make-believe and mischief you're you're dancing really carefully yeah um it's at this point here um you guys see the rustling of this makeshift uh looks it looks like a couple of bed sheets were kind of ha- hastily sh- uh taken off of people's beds uh cut up into uh parachute fabric and parachute string um and um you know that barry wouldn't have taken this off of his bed of course um but what you do see is this rustling uh material uh kind of start moving and jostling around as you see a familiar face or at least some of you see a familiar face which is charles jr uh coming out from underneath this from underneath this this, this parachute oh i'm so excited to meet charles jr um, again charles jr has this kind of like a uh, uh, little helmet on like a little leather helmet that you would see like uh, some of like the early astronauts wearing uh, with a little makeshift goggle uh, to go over his one eye. Uh, real eye. Uh, of course, his mechanical eye is perfectly perfectly fine. And uh, you see him uh, kind of give like a, a thumbs up to, to Barry uh, as you, you hear him say, it worked real good. Or what, is, what does he sound like? Uh, he sounds like Bobcat Goldthwait. Ah, it's, it works real good. It's, it's real good, Barry. That's a good, that's a good plan. <laughs> Here, can, can, I have oh my, my can I have my headband back, please? I need it. I need it to make good thoughts, make more complicated. Holy and uh, God, that was a journey. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, a Dragoon, can you take inspiration from yourself? <laughs> sure. Like, sure. So that way you as a DM could, I don't know, do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> it's at this point that Barry pulls out from behind his back um, that familiar headband that you guys saw him wearing. Uh, and as he slips it over his head, um, you see uh, Charles Jr. immediately, his face turned from like a smile of like a young uh, child, Bobcat Goldthwait, uh, turn into more of a serious, uh, angry uh, face as uh, you see Charles uh, slap uh, Barry right across the face, like no hesitation, just whack. As at this point here, you can see, or you can hear that Barry, or uh, Barry, uh, Charles' voice's voice has changed. It's it's now a bit more sophisticated, and he says, "Don't you ever, ever do that shit to me again." I told you no the first time, and then you go ahead and pull that shit and take that off my head and put me in that contraption, and shot me. You know what? That what, I, I could have gotten killed. I could have gotten killed. What the hell's wrong with you, Barry? He says, "Look, look, look there was a nine percent chance that it would have worked, which is huge. Which is huge. That means there's there's only there's only what I would say like a, there's just a couple of a couple of digits worth of failure in there. Like statistically, you were you were perfectly fine. <laughs> Besides, when I once I took the head headband off, you were totally cool with it. Look, look, look. Here, here. You signed this waiver, and he pulls out uh, a little waiver that has like a little handprint." Um, that uh, uh, you saw Charles Jr. kind of draw another turkey uh, on the hand. You would have assumed that this is a um, as a result of his intellect going severely down without this headband on his head. Mm. And uh, Charles Jr. then goes ahead and just uh, just storms off. Can, yes. Can I go after? <laughs> go ahead. Uh, go can ahead. I go after? Okay. Go, go after Charles and deliver the letter. Um, you go ahead and stop. Uh, 
Charles uh, Jr. as Cricket. You uh, basically fly over and tap him on the shoulder. He he turns around uh, and says, "Yeah, what do, what do you want now?" I have a letter to give you. Oh, ah, I didn't know I had an address here. He, uh, he takes the letter from you and opens it up, and uh, you see his his angry face turn into seriousness. And then the seriousness turn into sorrow as he begins to cry. As he reads your letter, Astrid, what does it say to Charles Jr.? So it basically says that Astrid had to go away and take care of her family member, but that she loves Charles Jr. very much and knows that he will do great things and that she's proud of how much he's grown and that she is very sure that their paths will cross again in the future. And that she wants him to have one of her rings. So that way, it always has a little bit of her energy left with him. Because he was very important to her. Is there any anything about this ring that's special? Or is it just like a, a circlet? It's, so it's the ring that she is wearing. So if you look at mm. the little miniature, it's a brightly colored ring. And she has one on every hand. So she kept one on one of her hands, and she gave the other one from her left hand, which is actually her dominant hand, to Ooh. Charles Jr. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. Um, as uh, Charles Jr., he sees this, he starts to kind of begin to, to kind of uh, sob, as he then just immediately kind of just collapses and falls into your arms. Um, cricket, as you kind of are like almost like pulled to the ground, like he doesn't, like he's not doing it maliciously. Of course, you could tell this. It's just like he's collapsing from from the sorrow. Uh, as he begins to kind of just like hug you and embrace you um, over the over the news. I hug him back and give him light pats and ask him if he wants something to eat. It might be little, but so eating something might help him feel a little better. As he's bearing his head into your into your shoulder, at least what is mostly your, like your shoulder and the rest of your body, um, because he's such a large individual of a Nothic size, <laughs> um, you can just you can feel his head nod in your shoulder, abdomen. Yeah. <laughs> I I will take him and uh, I look behind and look to Calypso and say, "Where is this balls?" Uh, so I could get him some food. Say, sorry, Vi, oh, say that again. So I'm asking for directions oh. to balls. Oh, he uh, he pulls away from you at this point here and then points to, he says, here, come come this way. I'll, I'll show you. And he, uh, he takes And then your, I'll make you food. I, I, could, I could use a meal. A good yeah. meal would be a good for a change. Food is important. And that's where we will end the episode. So, um, thanks for joining us again here. Uh, all of our characters here, we have uh, Mr. MT. Go ahead and give us a, a, a shout out as to where we can find you on the social media. Uh, I have a YouTube. Uh, it should be MTAK. Uh, I'm also on Twitch. I haven't streamed in a while, but it should also be MTAK. And uh, Clipso, do we have any social media that we can hit you up on? Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, J, J, D, on uh, it. Minnow, Minnow, how about yourself, sir? Where can we find you? You can find me as uh, Erroneous Gaming. Uh, and erroneous, not erogenous, just in case. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That's for the OnlyFans. That's right. That is for the OnlyFans. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Miss Copilot Violet, uh, Miss Miss Cricket, our newest player in the game. Where can we find you? I am Copilot Violet on Twitch and on Twitter, and I'm working on getting my YouTube up and running. And of Yay. course, uh, you can find me on uh, Twitch, Twitter, uh, and the YouTubes uh, underneath uh, Canopy Gaming uh, or, or underneath uh, Unlike Dragoon 91. So I uh, hope you guys had fun, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.